Ray, do me a favor. Back that engine out. We got a knockdown. Okay. It's negatory, Julio. I need to wedge that popper. Yep. Hey. Hey. What's your name? Uh, Joe. John. What is uh, it? Joe John. His name's Joe John? Johnston. Johnston. Joe. You want to tell me what happened here? Uh, dude, it's a fire. I don't know. I came by and it's... Checking out the fire. Well, that lady, uh, Mona, she said that you two were in the building when the fire started. Yeah, she's a liar, because I don't know her. So whatever, whatever she says is a lie, so. OK, so you're saying you weren't in the building with that woman? No, not I. All right. She started it, all right? Because she was like, I'm going to hate my job. I'm going to burn this mother down. And I said, you better not. You better not. She said it was an electrical fire. It was. It was a total electrical fire. It was like uh, the switches had sparks coming out and the sockets. And uh, it's like the 4th of July, man. Why aren't you wearing your pants, Joe? I tripped, and uh, then I had to take them off to run faster out of the flames. <coughs> I think I nailed some smoke. <coughs> Will you excuse me one second? I'll be right back. You got a sprinter, five foot five, no pants, unkempt, portly. Round one, fight! What's up, guys? Oh, man, I love me some Orange County. Uh, uh, my name's Joe John. Your name's Joe John. Or, or like five foot four, uh, portly. <laughs> you got to throw in the portly there. But um, welcome, though. <laughs> uh, this is Tournament Fight number Tournament Versus number 23, as far as versus go. And it, yeah, as you can tell, Jack Black versus Ben Stiller. I got my bad friends, but I mean, Jack Black and Ben Stiller are a version of bad friends, and they they work really well together. They've appeared in a in a in a few different movies together. They're they're uh, two of my favorite uh, personally comedic actors. A lot of people on this panel, a lot of people in general. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about their movies uh, because they they've mostly done comedy, but they've done some some serious roles too. So so yeah, we'll see what what the the random item has in store for us tonight on the tournament bracket. I am your host, as always, Jordan, the movie hero Anderson, or or um, how L. If you know, you know. And yeah, let's go in and bring in our panel for tonight. You know, you love him. He's my co-host, Austin Pezhow. I'm the on-screen so, talent, as you like to say. Yeah, right. Uh, no, yeah, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be uh, percussizing tonight, so uh, in the background, uh, stride nice. and glide, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, no, I, you know, guy, guys, I've been a fan of for a long time. That uh, you know, even going back to with Jack Black, uh, Airborne, which we'll talk about tonight, uh, just early, early '90s stuff. So uh, yeah, it should be an interesting tournament talking about both these guys. And quite yeah, a few like crossovers. I, I think they have, when you include their cameos, I think they have six or seven crossover movies on here. Yeah, too. right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I do kind of like that, that term. Like, you're the on-screen talent. I'm the behind-the-scenes the <laughs> talent. And then we both do, like, dabble in a little bit of the, uh, of one or the other, you know? So, sure. So, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this show is, uh, you know, I've tried to take uh, more of a reign of behind-the-scenes as far as downloading clips and, you know, making brackets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, doing these little goofy overlays that I do and all kinds of fun stuff. So, you know, trying to spice it up just a little bit. And I try to do some on-screen stuff. I bring some snacks, and some some drinks, and people roll their eyes. And but I, but I try to have fun with it, you know. So, <laughs> but but yeah. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and bring in our panel. We have Chris Scott with us tonight. Hey, what's Chris? up, guys? Hey, I'm man. excited to talk uh, movies. I feel like there's still some blind spots on here. Like I somehow have never seen Orange County. Oh you know, dang, that's that, that was incredible. But, yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially well, the yeah. deleted scenes, I always point people to the deleted scenes. They got all kinds of like, if you if you get the DVD, they got got like these things called interstitials or little ads for the uh, movie, little 
that quick little 30 second yeah ad that, well if you so didn't funny. know that clip i played from the beginning is from orange county and yeah ben Siller just has a quick cameo as the firefighter but jack black has the more prominent role uh yeah, yeah good stuff <laughs> good stuff there and also apologies for anyone who was supposed to be on this episode and i uh sadly overbooked i'm sorry that happens from, from time to time we'll have you on next time i'll make sure you're a priority on the next one you want to be on so so yeah but um we also have joining us tonight we have malcolm lay <laughs> What's up, Malcolm? Hey, Malcolm. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, it's. I've been a big fan of both Jet Black and Ben There's some movies that I don't like from the on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mostly on Ben Stiller's side, but um, for the most part, I like. I also have also never seen Orange County. So. Oh man, you guys mm. got to get on that because that I movie starts out with the with one of my favorite Cake songs, like. Like and it's a perfect way to start it. So you know what's a great thing about Orange County? I rewatched it recently. Not only is it funny, it's like 82 minutes. It's great. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh nice. man. Comedies that are under 90 minutes are money. Yeah, that's that's where it is. Well, it's quick. He wants to be a writer. You guys need two later series. I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. We will have it for 2002. So not too far. Yeah, because it's quick. Because um, what's his name? Colin Hanks wants to be a writer. He doesn't get in, but then he he quickly figures out like a, a scheme to do it and just does it quick. And you get in, you get out. It's quick, mm -hmm. so you know. But we also have uh, join us, Mr. Zachary Shelton. Hello, how's it going? Good. Uh, these are two of my top ten favorite actors, and again, there's still some blind spots. But I was able to watch six movies in preparation for this tournament, so. Yeah, you've been doing pretty good yeah. watching uh, like a ton of movies. So yeah, I appreciate that. So so yeah, good job. And, uh, <laughs> and JP will be with us soon. He's not here yet, but okay. I'll keep an eye out for him. But he'll be with and us. I, and, so I have, and I have seen Orange County, and I think it's underrated. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and JP is just like like saying goodbye to some company he has over. So, yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, um, uh, Austin, if you want to break it down for any first timers that might be watching or anything like that, let us know. Yeah. Work. Yeah, no. So this is a like we said, tournament fights versus. So anytime we do either uh, versus, as far as like, you know, our community members doing versus or a or actor versus, yeah, it's Jack Black and Ben Stiller, obviously. Um, so we got both of the uh, most of their filmographies on here. Not literally every single movie and every single tiny role. Uh, mostly just their big prominent stuff. Uh, you know, and a few of their stronger supporting roles, things like that. Uh, so sorry, any fans of Waterworld? I don't have that for Jack Black. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but he's you know a pretty minor role in that one. That'd same, be a blind spot for me, anyways. <laughs> so same with stuff like yeah. Enemy of the State. It is what it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, JPO's here, just doing the rules. How you doing? Hey, what's up, JPO? What up? Uh, but yeah, yeah no, I'm excited to be here. I love these two actors here. This will be fun. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna be a good time. No, and uh, so we got yeah, both these guys, uh, their filmographies in here. Uh, it won't always be because I randomize it. I, I spin it with it. It won't always be Ben versus Jack every single uh, you know matchup. It could be Ben versus Ben, Ooh, Jack versus Jack. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff in between. Uh, but like I said, these guys have when you count their cameos, six or seven crossover movies. So a decent amount of crossovers this time, not just like that one crossover. Uh, you know, like we sometimes have. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it should be a good time. We'll go up and down and everybody get a chance to vote. Uh, try to keep it under. 30-ish seconds or so, just so we can keep the, the pace going pretty good. And uh, we'll get it done and see who comes out on top, Jack Black, Ben Stiller, or both, if it's one of their yeah. crossover movies. Right. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Could or be. both, yeah. We've, we've had that happen with, uh, you know, Butch Cassidy, you know, both uh, Robert Redford and Paul Newman won that one together. Uh, yeah, So it, it can true. definitely happen. It can happen. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but well, I'll uh, get the uh, bracket pulled up here, and we right. will get going. Here we go. <laughs> All right, awesome. There is our bracket, and we will scroll on over to our very first matchup, which would be the Thriller Zero Effect uh, <laughs> for Penn Stiller against uh, Reality Bites. I'm going to scroll out just a tad, but uh, yeah, Zero Effect and Reality Bites. So Ben versus Ben here, uh, and we'll start at the bottom. JPL, you slid in last, so you'll be up first. Uh, what you got, sir? All right, so I actually like both of these here. Stiller's making some interesting choices, I think, in the 90s. Um, kind of like, reminds me of people like Matthew McConaughey and like others were like, for a while they kind of just slid into like the kind of the, a niche thing. But there's some interesting thing that he does shows. Those are, the, are two really good examples of that. I like Reality Bites, some could even say a little bit ahead of its time. Um, but I also really dug Zero Effect. This is one of those movies where like I just 
vaguely had heard of it. I was like, oh, it's Diller and kind of like a thriller and like playing, you know, again, against type from what you would think he was. Um, you know, if you kind of more grew up in the late 90s, 2000s with him like I did. And I kind of really dug Zero Effect. I thought it was a, a pretty tight, very less seen movie. So hopefully other people saw it. Um, but both good movies, I'm going to go Zero Effect, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Zach, what do you say? Uh, so I'm going to go with Reality Bites uh, f first because I actually own the movie because it's part of a Ben Stiller three pack. And oh, nice. It's one of those. And, and, I, yeah. and I remember actually enjoying it when I did watch it. And also, I just haven't seen Zero Effect yet. So Reality yeah. Bites for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, what are you going for? Um, yeah, I haven't seen either of these movies. Um, I am. I actually had never heard of Zero Effect until um, this until this tournament. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <here. laughs> I'm I'm gonna go for Reality Bites um, just because um, I've actually at least heard of it. And it sounds interesting. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and Chris, what do you say? Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Reality Bites. I think it was a fun rom com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Austin. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with Zero Effect. That's one that I've seen. I have not seen Reality Bites, but I've seen Zero Effect because I like Bill Coleman a lot. I usually watch a good amount of his movies. And here's a fun fact about Zero Effect. It's directed by Jake Kasdan, who so he worked with Ben Stiller long before he did the two Jumanji movies with Jack Black. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so he's worked with uh, – so as a director, he's worked with both of nice. these guys. And, uh, yeah, so uh, it's kind of an underrated little, yeah, detective comedy, a few thriller elements. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go with Zero Effect. Yeah, so I've got some – some good news for you guys and some even better news for you guys. <laughs> so I don't have a drink today, but I do have some ice cream I'm going to be eating on this thing. So I got this because <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. but That's awesome. It almost looks like Tamira Morrison or something. But, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I just bought this because it was the weirdest sounding ice cream that I've ever heard. The brand's called Cream Malicious, and it's Aunt Poonie's Caramel Pound Cake. <laughs> so I was like, what the frick? That just sounds really odd, really strange. And I'll just show you. It doesn't look any, like anything special. It's like it just has a, a, a big chunk of caramel over in the corner, and maybe it's all buried under there. I don't know. This is all but cutting into it, your it looks like. time for voting yeah. for this round. <laughs> but <way>. anyways, <laughs> yeah, I'll make it quick. I hate Reality Bites. That movie's painful. I blind bought it. Because grocery stores randomly sell DVDs sometimes, and you find that little like rack, the one little tiny rack there. And I blind bought it, and it was not good. I hated it, but I but I own it now. <laughs> and I haven't seen Zero Effect, but a good uh, like detective, private investigator kind of movie. I'm down for that, so I'll go Zero Effect. <laughs> All right, so we start off hot with a tie. So right off the bat, JPO, you got the tie. What you got? Hell yeah. Listen, no, no knocks in reality bites with zero effect. Go check it out, people. Zero effect. All right, there we go. Do it. Right. Out of time before the next round. Hurry up, everybody. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Tropic Thunder and Kung Fu Panda 2 uh, will be up next. For uh, Got Tropic Thunder with both the guys and Kung Fu Panda with Jack. Uh, Zach, you're up first. Uh, so while I do like Kung Fu Panda 2, and I think it's a good villain and a good uh, continuation of the Poe story, I just think Tropic Thunder just brings so much to the table in terms of action and comedy, and there's even some drama in there, and it's just ridiculous at times, so I'm going with Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Austin. Uh, Malcolm. Or, or sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, I looked right at Malcolm, and that's what came out. Malcolm, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to be alone on this one, but people know my thoughts on Tropic Thunder by now. I really don't like Tropic Thunder. I just don't find it funny mm. at all. Um, I just don't. It's not that good, but I I do really like the Kung Fu Panda movies. Um, and so Kung Fu Panda two gets my vote here. Yeah. Um, Chris, what do you say? I am beyond lo long overdue to revisit the Kung Fu Panda movies. I think I watched the first one forever ago and turned it off because I was like, this is dumb. Um, but I know that a lot of people love this on this channel. We'll say that, okay? So don't hate me. I know I'm due to watch those. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think I, I think a Tropic Thunder is a lot of fun. And it is silly and it kind of it's over the top at times and it's kind of ridiculous. 
And yeah, it does have a little bit of action elements in there. So I'm going to go with uh, Tropic Thunder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also, I don't know who Spoil Lord is. Maybe one of you guys might. He's a Shabadoo to all of you, so a Shabadoo to you, Spoil Lord. Uh, yeah. Eric Moreno? Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be cool. Nice. Well, welcome, welcome. If it's Eric, then cool. He's one of our guys that's been on a whole bunch. And then Chris Diaz is there, too. So what's up? Yeah. Um, okay, Chris. Yeah. What's up, guys? Mm -hmm. But Austin, what do you say here? Yeah, no, uh, if this was the first Kung Fu Panda, this would be a little trickier for me because that movie's in my 128. Um, I do like the sequels and they're decent, but the first one is vastly superior for me. So I'll go Tropic Thunder with this one because they're both great in that movie. And even Ben Stiller's direction is actually really good with this one. So all around for this tournament, I'm going to go with uh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah, and I'll just say this stuff's really good. If you get your hands on the Aunt Poonie's caramel pound cake 10 out of 10 that it was really good it doesn't have like as much caramel like swirl stuff that i'd like but the whole ice cream tastes kind of caramel and cakey and it's good but uh but for this match yeah i'm not like okay on, on the kung fu panda movies i think they're fun but uh but yeah tropic thunder is just a great ensemble cast anywhere from like matthew mcconaughey to to Jay Baruchel, Robert Downey Jr., and then that, the two at hand, Ben Stiller and Jack Black. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff, so I'll go uh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah. All right, All right JPO. Uh, JPO. Yeah, Kung Fu Pan is a pretty decent trilogy. There's not a bad one in the bunch, in my opinion, here. They're all pretty watchable. Um, but I don't think even my favorite one would get a vote over Tropic Thunder. I fell in love with it the first time I've watched it. I was that even from the previews. Everyone nails it, as you said, the cast, even people with smaller parts. Matthew McConaughey, Tom Cruise. We also want that Tom Cruise spinoff. Give mm -hmm. me fat hands and I want to dance. And they gave him fat hands and boy, did he dance. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great one. Also, I'm a sucker for a movie kind of about movies too a little bit. And it works on the money level. So Tropic Thunder. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. All right, Tropic Thunder, we'll move on. The Oscar nominated Tropic Thunder uh, for Robert yeah. Jr. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about that. Oh, yes. Uh, God, I still know what you did last summer. And be kind, rewind. <laughs> because as JPO pointed out in one of our A-side rules, one of the 90s movies that Jack Black dies in. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's sure. killed a lot in the 90s and then never yeah, dies sure in the 2000s enough. plus. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, All right. Well, uh, Malcolm, what you got on this one? Um. Yeah, I know I've seen, I, I still know what you did last summer. Um, I just don't re remember Jack Black in it. But, um, he got but, long dreads, he smokes a lot of pot, gets stabbed with some, some garden shear spoilers. That, yeah, still doesn't help, that still doesn't help me remember. Maybe three scenes, three brief scenes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But, um, but um, I really, I, I rewatched Be Kind Rewind for this, um, and it's just um, a lot of fun. It's one of those movies which I um, I can't remember who initially got it onto me. I think it might have been Jay Burns or some someone like that. But um, Beacon Rewind is just um, a great movie. It, it's one of those ones like, it, it, especially when it's like it just brings back memories of being a kid and recreating all these movie scenes and that with just whatever you could find um, on hand. So, like, so I'm going to go Beacon Rewind. Mm hmm. Sounds good. Um, Chris, what do you say? I'm going to go with I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. I love those movies, and I own the first one on 4K. I need to get this one on 4K, and Jennifer Love You, which was hot as hell. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yep. um, Austin. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I watched those uh, Did Last Summer movies. Uh, I might be rewatching the original Hill in here pretty soon. I, that sequel used to come on cable all the time, though, so I do remember Jack Black popping up throughout that movie. It's kind yes. of a so bad. It's kind of a so bad. It's good movie. Like it's not great, but it's kind of it's watchable. Uh, yeah, I might go with the better movie here, which is yeah, Be Kind Rewind and a little media role for him, and it's got a good little message to it at the end. So I'll go Be Kind Rewind. Jordan. Yeah, so I watched three movies to prep for this, and uh, I was kind of weighing out all my options. And I know what you did last summer. It's, it's, it's got a 7% from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes and 18 from the fans. So I'm like, eh, I'll wait on that one. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to rush out to that one. But but Be Kind Rewind's awesome. I think that's a lot of fun. And if you look up the, the cast, uh, for whatever reason, most deaf in his IMDb picture, he's wearing a wizard's hat. That's kind of kind of interesting for a, for a picture like that but um uh, and the movie's really good that they, they do like they got sweeted and they like uh like remake all these uh uh popular movies in very low budget form kind of like 
like just friends in their neighborhoods filming stuff and then they uh they uh rent them at their local video rental store because i think they like actually erase all the tapes or something so they just have those versions there so and, and they become kind of like a like a somewhat popular so yeah so i'll go be kind of rewind uh jpo Mm -hmm. uh weirdly enough this one is kind of a little tough for me here because uh as a 90s kid this was a, a cell i still know what was a big rewatch for me as well one of those that i got taped off of like a free showtime special so i had like the the r-rated version of vhs that i would watch a lot here <laughs> so i do have a lot of love for this sequel here um including the jack black cameo uh or no consider cameo always made me laugh as well yeah. here but i lean a little bit more towards me kind of rewind uh, i just i love the whimsy of it here i love the message i think it's just a, kind of a good Fun spirited movie. And does anyone know who directed it? No. <laughs> Michelle Gondry from Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So let's go be Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. I would have guessed like Jared Hess or something. It seems like that mm -hmm. kind of vibe. It's got that vibe to it. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> but uh, Zach. Mm -hmm. So I watched, so um, I was able to watch six movies for this tournament and Be Kind Rewind was one of them. And it. Nice. And it's one I had been wanting to watch for years. And I hate to say it, I was very disappointed in it, and I was not a fan of it at all. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, I'm going with I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Okay. All, right. all right. But it's still going to be four votes for Be Kind Rewind moving on. Yeah. And we will go down to Shallow Hell and Madagascar 3. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, both these guys have franchises. Obviously, Ben Stiller uh, a little heavier on the franchises, as we'll see throughout the uh, – the tournament here but uh we'll go to chris uh i really like shallow hell but i absolutely love the madagascar movies and i don't think they get old i'm gonna go with the madagascar three all right yeah uh austin yeah, no, I, I, it's this is a little trickier. Madagascar Two is my favorite of the three, um, but I do like these movies. I think they're some of the more watchable animated movies, and one of the better franchises. Um, I'll go Shallow Hal just because it's goofy and silly, and you know it, it was kind of during that golden age that I think we took for granted of like early two thousands comedies where they were just cranking them out, man, left and right. So I'll go, uh, I'll go Shallow Hal. Yeah. Um... Well, uh, the Madagascar movies came out at a time where I was a missionary for my church. The very first one did. And so we weren't allowed to like watch movies, really. You'll find out when we get to 2005 and six when I'm like, I really haven't seen a, a lot of movies. I need to go back and rewatch a ton of stuff in those years. But uh, so we started seeing it pop in the, uh, up all over the stores. And we're like, what is this movie? This is like weird, like uh, interesting. And, and I have seen it like like since then and they're fine i just like kind of maybe missed the boat to really like get super invested in it but uh but shallow how i think that's a lot of fun i think that maybe like the the message and stuff and with it doesn't necessarily hold up now but i still think that it's fun and and like it uh and yeah uh, shout out to jason alexander with a tail that's kind of interesting but um yeah i'll go shallow how uh, GPO. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, it's funny. I just said uh, Kung Fu Panda is a pretty decent trilogy. I, Madagascar is not that bad either, actually, now that I think about it here. Probably lesser than the Kung Fu Panda trilogy. And this might be my least favorite one, too, including the Penguins uh, spinoff. I think mm -hmm. this is the one I'd go Cold back hell. to the least. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that, that is a permanent like, reaction. I'm sorry, man. I love Penguins <laughs> and that movie's over my, my uh, Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, all Sorry. I said was this, this is the, the worst guy. one of the bunch. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm saying it's the worst one. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, go watch that. <laughs> anyway, uh, and Scrubs and all the other things that are weird. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and, two, and 2001 A Space Odyssey and No Country yeah, Man. <laughs> uh, I think Shallow Hall actually does have a really nice message here. It's weird because they fairly kind of have their cake and eat it too. They're definitely like, look at all these fat jokes. Ah, in fact, people funny. But he's the eye of the beholder. Like, I think they, they kind of have, you know, their way in uh, too. But uh, it's a really good movie. I think the ending really gets me every time. So, cuckoo, cuckoo. I'm going to go with Shallow Isle. Yeah, yeah. And and I realize that that's something that I said when we get when we get to the, two, the 2005 and six. We've already done those. And I <laughs> um, have, like, saw, like, a decent amount, I felt like. I don't know. But, but anyways. <laughs> because next we got 2003 coming up. So we're we're past that. But, uh, but Zach, what do you say here? 
Okay, so this is an interesting matchup. Um, Shao Hao was on my list to see for this tournament. And I just I didn't get around to it, but I will watch it like next month. Um, and I've only ever seen the first Madagascar movie, I think once, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. But because it was on my list to see, I'm going to go with Shao Hao. Right. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, do you say? Yeah, I was actually just going to call you out on, on what you said. About the yeah, list. right. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought about that. I'm like, wait a minute. We, we can't do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, um, I, I love um, the Madagascar movies, and um, I actually really like Madagascar 3. I think, it, I think it's it's one of those ones that is actually doesn't get talked about. It's being brought up much when you talk about DreamWorks movies in general. Um, but that being said, I, I do really love Shelley Howard um, more, though. I think it's it's, it's great. And, um, and I, I think it might have been the first Jack Black movie you ever saw, too. So you got to go Shelley Howard. All right. But, yeah, just imagine skipping, t- like, almost two full years of movies and then coming back to, like, reality, <laughs> like, after it. And you have all these movies to watch. It's crazy for a while. <laughs> uh, got Jumanji, the next level is what that is, uh, and the original Kung Fu Panda. Uh, so yeah, uh, so me first. Yeah, this is interesting because uh, yeah, the, both those Jumanji movies are good. Uh, first one maybe a little more solid than the second one, but I still like what they did with the second one. Still very watchable. But like I said earlier, Kung Fu Panda, the original one, is in my one twenty eight. I think the movie's fantastic and uh, probably one of the better sort of karate movies since you know uh, and kung fu movies since like uh you know original karate kids so it's good stuff uh, i'll go kung fu panda yeah and jumanji the next level that's a sequel right yeah what it is like the second one yeah mm-hmm. um the one where they're doing the yeah. danny glover danny devito stuff uh-huh. yeah yeah i probably like the first one of that a little better but uh, it's still good. It's still like like really good, actually. But um, I mean, it's not that far off. But uh, but yeah, like I think out of the kung fu and uh, movies, probably like one and two are like the the two that I like the best. They've kind of like like every one of them has been a very slight, not a lot, but like a slight step down over time. So I'll go with Kung Fu Panda. I think here, but. But the Jonji movies were a big surprise. Wait till we get to the other one. I might be higher on that. But uh, JPO. Yeah, this is a tough one here. I've, I've enjoyed both Jumanji's. I look forward to the third one if we finally get to it. Um, but yeah, I think that Kung Fu Spando kind of was a special one. Dude. That's the reason we kind of are coming back to that character now for a fourth time is because of what happens uh, in this first one, really. So, yeah, I got to go with Kung Fu Panda as well. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Zach, what do you say? So, um, if this was the first Jumanji, like, Welcome to the Jungle, I think this would have been a tougher matchup. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I liked the sequel, but I wasn't a, it wasn't as good as the first one. But, I mean, the first Kung Fu Panda is just uh, entertaining and just a fun watch. So, I'm going to go with Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm. Yeah, um, I like, um, as I said, um, with two, I mean, I, I like the Kung Fu Pandas enough. Like, I'm not as high on them as other people are, but I really love the sequel to, uh, um, to Magic. It's, it's still, like, it's still not, it, it, like, I agree with, it's still not as good as the, um, Welcome to the Jungle one, but I still think it's, it's, it's still a really good movie. So I'm going to go to Magic the next year. Yeah, and uh, Chris? I'm going to go with uh, Jumanji uh, Next Level. I think mm-hmm. the movie's really good. I think it's a great, solid sequel. I think it expands kind of that world that we saw in the first one. And I didn't know we were totally going to get a third one, so I'm hoping that's true. Probably. They were pretty successful. So well, I mean, the yeah. post credit scene kind of hints that. True, yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. Rock's got to settle his beef with Cody Rhodes first, and then we'll get it. All right. Yeah, so, right. Uh, and then the Rock can finish the Jumanji story. That's right. And then, well, they could, hey, JPO, they can call it Jumanji, the final boss. Get it? Yeah. Hey, I like it. I like yeah, it. That's right. That'll work. Uh, Kung Fu Panda moves on. Uh, we got Anchorman, which I was kind of against putting in here because they both have cameos. 
but I guess I was overruled. <laughs> and uh, well, for me, and it's both in it, so that's kind of why they both have a cameo. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, keeping the faith uh, is a Ed Norton movie. Uh, so Jordan, literally, he directed it too. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, he actually directed it. <laughs> yeah, what? Ed Norton's joined. So him. I've seen Keeping the Faith, but it's been like like really out of order. Like I think I like caught some of it on TV, got like the beginning and then the end, and then I found it somewhere and just watched the middle part that I that I hadn't seen before. So it's really like disjointed. So. I probably need to just like sit down and watch it from the beginning to end, but uh, so and, and it was fine. I, I thought that it was okay, but I mean, Anchorman is the heavy hitter. I know that, that they're both cameos, but even like like if, if Anchorman goes up against something that I that I really like, then I, I'll probably end up voting over it. If it's something where they have like more prominent roles in it, you know. But uh, but for now, I'll go Anchorman because I think. What they both do, like Jack Black's on the motorcycle. Hey, you just messed up my ride. And like, like uh, he drop kicks the dog off the bridge. And then Ben Stiller, I think, is like the the Spanish reporter or something like that. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'll go Anchorman. Mm -hmm. uh, JPO. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm kind of with Pez. Like, <laughs> I'm not in love that it's on here, but also too, <laughs> also really like keeping the faith. Um, I really do. That's, that's another one that I've, I just bought on at Blockbuster or a long time ago. I think it didn't have the case. It just had like a generic Blockbuster case on top of the case. It was cheaper. <laughs> I, I, have, cheaper I, I might have a few of those laying around my, my drawer still. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> JPL, yeah, you know? they, would, they would always yeah. be cheaper. So like, you know, it'd be like, oh, okay, sure. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> that's, like that, that's like when you buy the red box disc and just the disc out yeah. of the red box and they give you just the plastic, you know, or they, just the disc and you have to put it in like a plain goofy case or something. Yeah. That's how I got the movie House Guest, uh, that like Sinbad uh, movie with, from a, a, a red box. Because that movie, you can't buy it anywhere almost. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. And no, and I, I kind of like it instantly from there. It's, it's a fun little love triangle. One's a priest, one's a, one's a rabbi. They both fall for Jenna Elfman. Do they walk into a bar? Yeah. <laughs> At some point, I'm sure they do. They priest, a, a rabbi, and Jenna Elfman rabbi. walk into a bar. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, a stereo and the guy's using like a fake accent and then he finally realizes who they are and he breaks the mold and uh no i just i thought that was a really funny charming movie uh so i'm gonna go uh keeping the faith here yeah yeah whatever happened to jenna elfman she she was big in like the 2000s and then she like went yeah. away <laughs> <Kinda She's interesting. laughs> sitcom money she's fine <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but but uh zach what do you say so this is pretty easy for me um <clears throat> I've never seen Keeping the Faith, and actually, it's one movie I rarely heard about until right now. Um, but Anchorman is kind of like Jordan said, kind of a heavy hitter and very quotable, uh, very funny. So I'm just going to go with Anchorman. We've also yeah. sucked the Anchorman seat enough. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it goes against something worthwhile, we'll, we'll vote. It is. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a, this one's a, but, uh, I'll get uh, Yeah. Uh, Malcolm. <laughs> well, I mean, the last major thing Jenny Elfman has done is she was a big cast member of Fear the Walking Dead recently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? I don't know. Oh, she's, that's Fear she's the a, Walking Dead. Yeah, that's she's a main character on Fear the Walking Dead, so that's what she's yeah. been up to. <laughs> yeah. I've only seen two seasons of that. I need to, I need to watch one. Um, but, um, yeah, um, I'm also kind of pissed here. Like, although, that being said, between that and Ice Age, which was knocked out to get Anchorman in, um, I think Anchorman, <laughs> both, both are like a, probably on the bubble anyway. But, um, but yeah, I haven't seen Keeping the Faith, but I'll vote for Keeping the Faith. Um, just because Ben Stiller has a more prominent role in it, and they're both, both just came as a main command. So, yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, what do you say? Uh, I do love my uh, steelbook of uh, Anchorman uh, 1 and 2, but uh, just because they have cameos, and uh, based on uh, your description, uh, JPO, I definitely want to see uh, Keep in the Faith, so I'm going to go with that one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, Austin. Yeah, I, I, I'm the one who kind of 
said that you know kept Anchorman off the list initially because I you know said they're yeah. both cameos and and you know I get that they're both in it but they're both cameos and they're not prominent roles and so in this case keeping the faith is one I've been always wanting to get around to but I just never have uh, but uh, yeah if JPO vouches for it and uh, says it's worthwhile I'll, I'll go check it out I like the cast and uh, Eli Wallach's in it I'll watch anything with Eli Wallach so yeah, my good bad, the ugly yeah. love so uh, yeah I'll go I'll go with keeping the faith why not well he might have a couple of cameo from some other movies on here. Also, uh, so, everybody uh, else has at least a prominent supporting role on here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I watched one that could be considered a cameo. I'll I'll bring it up when it gets there. Uh, don't worry, we won't get far on foot. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix movie or oh, there or, it no. is. Yeah, yeah. Thinking of a cameo. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's fourth build right there on the poster. I wouldn't say that's a cameo, which is weird because <laughs> he's barely in the movie. Yeah, he's barely in it. He is only a, a few scenes, but they're impactful scenes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then we got the the Royal Tenenbaums, Wes Anderson movie. Uh, JP, I've back down to you. <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to recheck out Royal Tenenbaums because I've become a Wes Anderson fan recently, but Royal Tenenbaums is not one of them. Uh, so I do kind of wonder maybe I just saw it too early. Uh, I really like Don't Worry, uh, he won't get far on foot. You know, Jack Black kind of plays against sight. He's kind of reason to a degree. You know, Walking Phoenix ends up in the state he's in. And uh, it's just a really good, well written tale. I think Luke Gusman's in it, maybe, or but yeah, um, it, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I really liked this one. I only saw it once, but I liked it the time I saw it, so I'm gonna go, don't worry, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Zach. <laughs> yeah, so Royal Ten Moms was another movie that I watched for the first time for this tournament, and it's another movie that I had been wanting to see for years and I just hadn't gotten around to it. Um, but I thoroughly, uh, it was a pleasant surprise for me. And I actually think that uh, Gene Hackman was the best character in this, but I think everybody does a great job with their characters. And I don't, ha- I, I haven't seen the other movie, so I'm going to go with Royal Tender Moms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malcolm. Yeah, um, I, I like Royal Tender Moms is probably around the middle of my um, resilience and ranking. Um, I, I do i do i do really like it um but yeah i, I think don't worry he won't get um far on foot um i think it, it's a it's a really um it's a really good movie um and yeah um and as well as like i will say i will argue that um jack black does have it like is not a cameo he's kind of a major part of that plot point in that on the, in the movie and even on in one of the other posts i've seen of don't worry he get Oh, but they've got Jack Blake on the poster. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's not in it a lot, but it, but it, but what he does is important to the movie. Yeah, yeah, yes. ex- exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, my votes for don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris, what do you yes. say? Well, I hate the Royal Tannenbaum, so I'm gonna go with uh, <laughs> don't worry. Or you won't get far on foot because it actually sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. Um, awesome. Well, much like uh, you know my uh, my co-host up above me, we're not Wes Anderson fans. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of uh, anything. Royal Ten is one of the more tolerable ones, I'll say, but I'm still not a fan. Uh, and yeah, don't worry. I watched when we did uh, when uh, we did uh, Walkie Finish a Rank of Malcolm, and then yeah, it was it was kind of floating around there. And yeah, it was a nice little surprise, good little good little small movie. Yeah, another another good Jonah Hill movie. That dude is sneaky. Sneaky yeah. damn good. There's a reason he's been nominated really twice, twice for Oscar. So uh, he's really, really good. Uh, so I'll go. Don't worry here. Yeah, I mean, my uncle Wes, like he, he's kind of the black sheep of the family. He's just <laughs> no, like, like I don't really love most of his movies. But it'd be funny. I thought about maybe sometime just for the, the hell of it, just doing like a, a Wes Anderson ranking for someone who hates Wes Anderson movies. I don't know if that <laughs> that'd be interesting to anyone, but, but. Um, because I have, in, like Z. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I I have seen the Royal Tannenbaum, and it's one of the better Wes Anderson movies, but it, but it's still a Wes Anderson movie. That, that's the thing. I'm just not not that enthused about almost any Wes Anderson movie. And uh, but don't worry, you won't get far on foot. I watched for the first time for this, and yeah, it's really good. It's really powerful. And yeah, the Jonah Hill, like that might be one of the most like kind of unique and kind of like different like roles that I've seen from him. And it's when he's like kind of at his skinniest too, <laughs> like, and, and it works. And, um, and, uh, the, the, uh, Jack Black stuff. Yeah. Like he's kind of the reason, 
well, like the big, like almost the main reason why uh, Walking Phoenix is paralyzed in it. And yeah, it's uh, really powerful about drinking and stuff. So I'll go. Don't worry. You won't get far on foot. All right. Well, there you go. It's going through. And we'll go down to uh, Duplex with Ben Stiller oh, no. and, and Zoolander. Oh, no. These uh, are two movies I really like. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go to Zach first. Uh, so Ben versus Ben here. So I've seen both of them. Um, I don't remember much about Duplex because I saw that probably more than a decade ago. Um, but, I mean, Zoolander is just – it has its funny moments. It's – uh, definitely quotable, and it just has some unique characters. So Zoolander. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Malcolm, what do you say? Yeah, there's only a, a few movies on this list that I hate more than Tropic Thunder. Zoolander is one of them. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't find that funny at all. Why are you on this episode? <laughs> 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 well, I, I like a lot of um, other movies. <laughs> I have three other people that are pissed at me because they didn't get on. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that like Ben Stiller movies? Yeah. <laughs> Look, no, you're I good. Mean, there's only about five or six that I don't, really don't like. Um, but I yeah. really do enjoy doing most popular really, really, ones. <laughs> I, 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 I really not, do enjoy I, I really do enjoy Duplex. So Duplex is here. Yeah. This time, yeah. this time, JPO, it's not your turn. Shush. Chris. So I have never seen Duplex, but I really like Zoolander. It's a great movie. It's hilarious. Yeah. Definitely belongs in there. Yeah. Um, Austin. This is going to be a contentious vote because, uh, yeah, I don't like either one of these movies, but I especially hate Zoolander. I can't fucking stand that really? movie. I, oh, I no. hate it. I told, I told you this before. You you know, you know, yeah. This is, this is not Are a mystery to you. I didn't know that you, I, I, you hated it. I thought you were just... I, like, I yeah, hate it. I tried to rewatch it again like a year ago, and I couldn't stand that damn movie. Uh, yeah. What about your boy Billy of... Zane? Like, he's in it. Come on. And? Yeah, he's better <laughs> in The Phantom. It's cool. He plays himself. Yeah. Awesome. Not enough to save the movie. Uh, I wish he was in a better movie. Uh, so, you know, despite the fact that I'm not a fan of Duplex either, uh, it doesn't annoy me as much as Zoolander, so I'll go Duplex. Oh, man. Like, for me, I just love the Zoolander so much to the point where, like, I'll, I'll just keep it brief because I, I, I've told the story before, but but to, like, dress up as it for the, the sequel and get my hair dyed and, like, get a, a, like, sparkly, like, zebra print suit and all that, and, the, and then my buddy Mark w- w- was Hansel and... and and it was awesome. We had the scooter. And then walk and out disappointed when that <laughs> sequel sucks. I know. Yeah, we both didn't like the sequel. We won't defend that. But but the first one, uh, I think is 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 like so great. Just like like him just being a moron, just doing all these these like model poses and everything. And then when when he goes back to see his dad and his uh, John Boyd, when he's like, okay. Like, I think I got a, a case of the black lung pop. Yes. <laughs> and then they're doing everybody's working for the weekend down in the, the uh, mine. And then he's like, you're just up there prancing around with your wiener hanging out for everyone to see. Yes. And it's just funny because, because like, John Voight plays it so straight and it just works. <laughs> it's good stuff. But, uh, and uh, Duplex, also great. Like, I, I love that old Irish lady that just just like a noise of living hell at him when he has to like go like run all these these errands take her to get her monthlies and she's counting out her like her like pills at the the pharmacy and then she's like look blueberries and she sees the blueberries she's counting them out and then she gets her surround sound and and like just all the things that she does to, to annoy them and then they like literally try to kill her but make look like an accident but but still my heart goes to zoolander for the first one i'm sad i think they both deserve it to move on but i'll go zoolander mm-hmm. Yeah, JPL. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this round's not going the way I thought it was going to go. Uh, <laughs> I, I really like Zoolander. It has grown on me over the years. I think it's it's really funny. It's a, it's a great type, tight script. Um, and I think it only gets better the kind of more time you watch it. Uh, Duplex. I did not like Duplex the first time I saw it. Still don't. I don't believe these two as a couple. Uh, the old lady's kind of funny, but that kind of grows after a while here. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of Duplex, so I got to go. Uh, Zoolander here for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, barely for now. <laughs> yeah. For now. Uh, Orange County and the Polka King uh, from Netflix. So uh, Jack versus Jack here. And a little bit of Ben still in there, as we saw in the original. A little cameo. Yeah. Uh, but Malcolm. 
Um, just a very quick um, side note. Duplex apparently is apparently known in Poland as the old lady must go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and the old lady, <laughs> and nice. old lady from Duplex played Grandma Josephine in the remake Italian Chocolate. Oh, nice. I'll have to remember that for our, our foreign alternate title episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. But anyway, um, back to this match. Um, unfortunately, I haven't seen Orange County. It's one, I've been, I, I, it's one I actually did try to find for this, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, um, I, I do think the Polka King is actually very underrated. I think it's a, a really interesting movie, and um, I think it's one um, it's a, also a really good neat movie movie too so i'm gonna go with the polka king. yeah um chris what do you say i'm gonna go with the uh, polka king i think it's not just jack black being jack black like i think it's a solid performance from him like i think he does such a good job becoming this actual real person which is i had no idea about the polka king and how much of kind of a sleaze bag he was but yet he kind of has a he kind of actually like, comes around the corner uh this movie's awesome of course, yes, I did watch it for the first time, but fucking awesome. I wish I could own this movie. Um, mm. So, Polka King. Yeah. Um, Austin. Yeah, no, I haven't seen the Polka King, but I would check it out just because I like polka music. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. Uh, yeah. you know, I, like a, I like a good accordion. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I, ha- I haven't gotten around to that. I just don't get around to a lot of Netflix movies, so uh, it just is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I rewatched Orange County not too long ago, and yeah, that movie really holds up. It's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, really tight, quick, like 82, 85 minute movie here. Like, uh, you know, uh, gets in and gets out, uh, hits you with some good stuff. The family's great, Catherine O'Hara and all that. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's really solid all around. Jack Black's really, really funny in here. So uh, I'll go Orange County. Yeah. Um, it's another one that, that um, it's, I think it's either, must, it has Mike White in it, but, but like, I don't remember. Oh yeah. He's the guy that's like the, like, like teacher trying to get them to pick out different books and characters and all that. That's like, I was going to say that guy from, from also School of Rock, but then he also uh, created White Lotus. Like, like the, for, uh, for whatever reason, that doesn't like like add up. And but, but he's a survivor of Love and I. And also, uh, from The Amazing Race, he was on that too. <laughs> I watched this <laughs> season, so where he's like running around with his dad. But, uh, but um, yeah, I think that that like the Polka King just one of those ones. That, like, I know I've seen it, but I don't remember anything uh, about it. I just looked up the cast and like the. The kid that's in it kind of looks familiar, and like I remember Jenny Slate in there and stuff, but it's just I don't remember a, a lot about it. But but yeah, Orange County that's a movie that that like uh back before streaming, like I went to great lengths to like try to track this this movie down at like a, a, a local store. I remember going around <laughs> trying to find a couple of like random movies, and that was one of them. And, and yeah, um. And also, I always shout out, check out the deleted scenes and, like, all the interstitials and the things that they, they have and all the features. They got a, got a ton of it with, like, like him trying to help him get, in, get into um, Harvard. Like, like, dear Harvard, you better let my brother into college. I have a black belt in Taekwondo. I am the annihilator. <laughs> I will go medieval on your asses. <laughs> so, yeah. It's funny stuff. And, yeah, I love Orange County. And it has a great soundtrack, a great kind of like early 2000s kind of soundtrack. So, yeah, I'll go Orange County. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a JPO. <laughs> and guess what? It's a crossover movie. Yeah, right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, you weren't here. You weren't here for it, but I, I played the Ben Stiller Jack Black scene from Orange County at the beginning of the show. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <there> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well, that's because I played it, and we already watched the whole scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there you go. Uh, so yeah, uh, this actually, it's actually kind of similar for me here. Pokemon's an interesting <laughs> story, um, so it's definitely kind of worth watching. Um, but I don't know if Netflix totally executes it the best. I think there's kind of more to be told or a different way of doing it. It kind of feels like a uh, kind of half baked to a degree. Um, Orange County does have its laughs as well. I enjoyed it. It's been a minute, but I think I'm gonna go Orange County. Like I enjoyed it. That was a little funnier. And I might have said Harvard. He's trying to get into Stanford. That's what it is. But, mm-hmm. but uh, 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 Zach, what do you say? So this is actually a tough matchup because I watched Polka King for the first time last year for a battleground match, and um, and I've also seen Orange County, and I actually think it's kind of underrated. Mm-hmm. 
but I really enjoy it. But just by a slim margin, I'm going to go with Orange County. Okay. Yeah. So Orange County moves on. All right. And we'll go down to uh, Meet the Fockers uh, and Kung Fu Panda 3. Uh, so we'll go to Chris on this one. Go first. I love uh, Meet the Fockers. I think it's so damn funny. So good. Uh, I'm actually going to go with uh, Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Pretty easy here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Austin. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda Three was the one is the one I've seen the least <laughs> out of that trilogy. Uh, it's it's okay, um, but I'm with Chris. I'm I'm actually a fan of Meet the Fuckers. I think that's a pretty damn solid follow up. Dustin Hoffman and Barbara Streisand are freaking hilarious in this movie. They're awesome. Uh, all the stuff with the baby uh, and all the shenanigans he gets into with yes. the ass. Old. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really good yeah, stuff. All stuck to his hand. <laughs> yeah, very very. Yeah, funny. he glues the ball. Uh, yeah, yeah, all that stuff is great. And the guy they got to play. The, the kid who they think is Ben Stiller's kid is spot on. <laughs> he looks just like him. Uh, so kudos to them. But uh, I'll go meet the fuckers. Yeah, like, I'm not as high on meet the fuckers. I think that it's, like, it's good. But it for me, like, it's nowhere near the original. I think the original, like, it's original. way better. And, uh, yeah, like, I, I think that it has its, its moments, though. It has, it's, like... Like highs and lows, like a roller coaster. It's got great moments and then boring stuff to me. But um, Kung Fu Panda Three, that's one that I, that I watched recently. That's the most recent one that that I've seen. Uh, and hmm, I like the first two better, so I'll go with with, with Meet the Fockers. I think it, that's that it's funny enough. And so yeah, uh, JPO. Uh, I'll show some love to Meet the Fockers. I don't mind it. Um, but again, I'm not the biggest fan of anything in that trilogy here. I think Kung Fu Panda 3 is actually, to me, more watchable and funnier, so I'll go Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zach, what do you say? So, I haven't gotten around to meet the fuckers yet, but I have seen Kung Fu Panda 3. And of the trilogy, yes, I think it is the weakest, but because I've seen it, I'm going to go with Kung Fu Panda 3. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, what do you say? Malcolm? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're Malcolm. 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 Might, might be muted. I don't know. Or oh, he's not hearing us. Yeah, he's, he's trying to play with his mic. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, okay. Uh, if you can't hear us, Malcolm, or something, uh, hit, hit us in the private chat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because I don't know if it's overwhelmingly meet the Fockers. Just move it uh, it's three to two. It's very close, actually. Okay. So okay, so we, yeah, yeah, might, might need this vote. Yeah, huh? just right. Huh. Uh, we All right, so we're gonna skip this one. We'll come. We'll come back to it. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Hit us in the private chat, Malcolm. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. So we'll we'll come back to that one. Let's go to Gulliver's Travels. Can you hear me? Little Are you there? Oh yeah. Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah, it's... yeah, no, um, for some reason my um, headphones died and I couldn't hear anyone, but so I wasn't sure if I was frozen or anything, but... Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I um, do really like um, the Kung Fu Panda movies. I think Kung Fu Panda is, um, is great, but I really do like Meet the Fockers, so I'm going to go Meet the Fockers. Okay. Yeah, and... And I'm sure that's because, could be because of your your headphone issue, but it sounds like you're you're coming from your regular mic on your camera, and not your. Well, uh, I mean that property is because I've unplugged my mic at the moment, so it's okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah the, the whole the whole thing's work. screwed up right now. I'm sure it'll work yeah. on it. Uh, yeah. Gulliver's Travels and Le Meet the Fockers. Yuck. Anyways. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> me, uh, yeah. yeah, this is, uh, I look, Little Fockers is, yeah, the, I, I don't think anything about that movie works. It's a horrible finale. Gulliver Show is not great, but it's at least a little more inventive and trying something. So I'll go Gulliver just by a little bit. Yeah, they did it like years ago. This could have been like early 2000s or late 90s, but they, they did a Gulliver Travel TV series with. With like Ted dancing and stuff, and and I actually like that that one better than this. <laughs> um, but 
Uh, and Little Fockers is just bad. It's just like, it's like the last remnant of like when Jessica Alba was still like the like like super hot. She's still attractive, but it's just she was like really hot in, in this. But uh, and yeah, I'll give it to Gulliver's Travels just uh, slightly. Uh, JPO. Uh, I'll, I'll go good against Grain so far here. Yeah, this is not a great round by any means, but I mean, I really nothing Gulliver's Travels. I mean, I want to like it. It's a fun plot. You know, it's been done before, as you said. Jack Black, Jason Segel, Emily Blunt. It just doesn't work. It's not funny. It just fully falls apart. Emily Blunt later on admitted, I, I didn't want to be in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a we scratch your back, you scratch ours kind of thing. <laughs> to suddenly admit that is not great. At least Little Fockers has characters you kind of like, and you know what I mean. You've kind of grown to a you know door to a degree, so there's a little bit more to it. Yeah. So Little Fockers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Zach, what do you say? So it's funny because I thought I heard like a story that it was because of Goldberg's travels that Emily Blunt did not get Black Widow. That that might well, have been. Well, it might have. It might have. Yeah. Well, because it probably fucked up her schedule or something. Yeah, yeah. probably cost. Yeah, her. yeah, they were around but, the same um, time, so that makes sense. Twenty ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, uh, just like with the last round, I've only seen Meet the Parents, but I have seen Go Over Travels, and from what I remember, it wasn't a bad movie. I mean, it wasn't a good movie, but it was serviceable. So I'm gonna go with Go Over Travels. Okay. That's a good word. Serviceable, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Malcolm, did you figure anything out? Yeah, yeah, I, I should be fine. Once okay, I plugged yeah. it all back in, once I plugged it all back in, my headphones started going again. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. Just very quickly, one thing I was going to bring up um, last time that I just really fussed about everything I forgot all about it. Um, the guy that played um, the guy that kid that um, they bought was Ben Siller's son. Is actually um, the same guy from Ash vs. Evil Dead, Raymond Santiago. Um, yeah, yeah. But, um, mm, okay. Um, but yeah, um, surprisingly enough, I actually really like these movies. I don't hate them. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with both of them. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah. Hold um, it, Just hold it in. He's your friend. Hold it in. Hold it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, but out of the two, I think I really like Gulliver's Travels a little bit more. So Gulliver's Travels gets my vote. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris. Chris. I really don't like Gulliver's Travels. It's painful, but uh, was even more painful is that a piece of shit movie, Little Fockers. So <laughs> yeah. we're gonna go with uh, Gulliver Travels here. Yeah, okay, what's the least so... painful one? All right. Yeah. All right. So let's see what's going to beat Gulliver's Travels in the next round. Let's see. We got oh, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny and High Fidelity. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, Jordan. I know where Jordan. Which uh, Tenacious, Tenacious, D, another, <laughs> Tenacious D, another Tenacious D, another one of our, cross, another one of our crossovers because Ben Stiller does pop up in that movie. So uh, well, yeah. so we watch something. Mm-hmm. What's interesting that I'm first. I don't really care for either one of these movies. I just don't like. Um, I rewatched High Fidelity for this because I hadn't seen it for years and years, and I always got it confused with Reality Bites. I don't know why, but it, but I just somehow did, and and um, yeah, I just d- don't like High Fidelity. Like I just find John Cusack's character just, just effing annoying. He's just in there complaining about every woman he's ever been with, and and treats them bad, and does horrible things, and thinks he can just like. So they're gonna stay with them, and they're not gonna stay with them when you treat a woman bad. They, most of them don't; they leave you. So, uh, and uh, at Tenacious D—they're at least having fun, you know. Like, uh, and they got some cool like music video type stuff in in there, and like it's it's pretty funny. So I like it better than High Fidelity. So I'll go Tenacious D. Still don't love it, but I'll I'll vote for it here. Mm-hmm. Uh, JPO. Um, I prefer High Fidelity to the Hulu series with Zoe Kravitz. That's a weird fact. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, between these two here, I mean, Tenacious D has its moments, but I think they're better in smaller doses. I never loved this movie mm-hmm. here. I feel like I do need to get high and watch it because then I might like it more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Otherwise, I just I don't think it's the funniest movie out there, and I really want to like it and champion it. Um, High Fidelity, I think it's a better script. It's one I'd go back to more. So I'll go High Fidelity here. Yeah. Uh, Zach, what do you say? 
So Tenacious D was actually the last movie that I saw for this tournament. I think I saw it two days ago. And I really enjoyed it. It's outrageous and ridiculous, but that's kind of what drew me in. And it just unique characters and unique situations. Um, unfortunately, I haven't seen High Fidelity yet. It's on my list, though. But I'm going to go with Tenacious D because I've seen it. Yeah, it's kind of like the movie studio. It was like, hey, Jack Black, go make a movie about your band and do whatever you want. So they kind of just did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, Malcolm, what do you say? Um, yeah, I should really like both of these movies. Um, I have a lot of fun with High Fidelity. Um, I think it's great, but um, I I rewatched Nature Super Kid Disney for this, and um, I really loved it. And it's one of those ones like I've been on this rewatch. I completely forgot that it had some surprising cameos that I didn't forget because Amy Poehler pops up in this movie. Um, Amy Adams is there. Colin Hanks, uh, and then you've got John C. Wiley as the scarce what Scott, uh, the Sasquatch, and Tim Robbins pops up as well. And then you've like Meat Life Patrol, which I always knew, but um. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's great. And so, yeah, I'm going to go pick a Disney here because Jack Black is a sort of more of a role in it. Yeah, uh, Chris, what do you say? Um, I'm also not really a fan of of uh, pick a Destiny. I think it's just all right. I've never quite understood like the the cult level following. I feel like it has, but uh, John, but a uh, John Cusack's a uh, high fidelity is a good movie. I'll go with that one. Yeah. Um, Austin. So I've seen both of these, but Tenacious D I saw once in theaters when it came out. I remember being kind of bored with it. Uh, that's all I remember. It just kind of, eh. uh, it just being not really my my vibe. I have not seen High Fidelity in years, probably not since I rented it from Blockbuster back in like 01 or 02 or something. Uh, that's the one I'm kind of more interested in revisiting at some point and uh, re-familiar myself with. So I'll go uh, High Fidelity. With that, we have a tie. So we go up to Zach uh, for the tiebreaker. Uh, tenacious D. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Tenacious D. All right. We'll go down to There's Something About Mary and Year One. So there's something about Mary wins or. <laughs> yeah. I think year one isn't like, uh, like the biggest piece of shit out there, but, it, but yeah, it's something about Mary. It's a year pretty one piece of is shit. So sloppy. Well, there's laughs in it. Cause there can't be laughs with this kind of cast. They yeah. cannot not be laughs, but like they'll start jokes and then not finish it. Like, Oh my God, I got a snake wrapped around my neck. And they'll just smash cut to the next scene. Cause they don't know how to end it. Like, yeah. It's such a sloppily edited half big movie. Yeah. All right, so cool. All right, so we'll move on. Rest in peace, Rest in peace, Ramos. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, oh he's in two in School of Rock. So okay, School of Rock wins. Which uh, I think we all agree is a pretty heavy favorite yeah, here. Even the Zoolander fans here agree that sequel's not. Yeah, good. even the Zoolander yeah. fan Jordan uh, uh, agrees yep. that that movie sucks. I mean, yeah, that movie sucks. Oh uh, yeah, well there we go. So yeah, all right, <laughs> going down to Tower Heist and Goosebumps. <laughs> Uh, oh, so, no. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about this. I, I don't know where this one goes. We'll see. Uh, JPO, back on to you. Um, no, this one's kind of a thinker. And again, kind of like a mediocre way, a thinker. Um, <laughs> I wanted to really like Tower Heist because, um, again, you know, I kind of keep wanting to think, like, maybe Eddie Murphy's back. No. No? How about no? No? And again, this one was just kind of fine. I, I, I didn't, didn't dislike it, but I didn't love it either. Um, the latches aren't really totally there. Um, and Goosebumps, I think it's kind of, to me, it kind of fit the mold better as what kind of movie it was going for. Uh, you know, again, not totally up my alley, but not totally against either. So I'll go Goosebumps here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Zach, what do you say? So I'm going to go with Tower Heist because I because I have seen it, and I did enjoy it when I did see it. So Tower Heist. Yeah. Um, Malcolm. I haven't seen Tower Heist, but I... I um, as evident by my um, like TV episode against JPO, I'm a big Goosebumps fan in general. Um, I, I love the books growing up. I love the TV show. Um, and um, and yeah, and um, this movie is just a lot of fun. It's one of those ones like it wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but um, what I got, I really enjoyed it all the same. Um, and yeah, um, and it's one of those ones I really like the little um swap over with the cameos at the end there because you got um 
Errol Stein popping in playing the drama teacher, Mr. Malik. So, um, yes, oh, nice. go Goosebumps. <laughs> that was the reason I didn't like it as much as I wanted to, though, because it's not the TV show. TV yeah, show is exactly. a great anthology series, and this one was just Same. like, yeah, it's the Catch the Monster of the Week. Yeah, like, yeah right. Not what I yeah. At all. I didn't. Yeah. Um, well, but, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, the concept works better for an anthology TV show. Of course, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it was an interesting yeah. story that it was like almost kind of like stories with um, you know meaning yeah. behind it. This was just simply catch the monster, ah, wackiness. Like yeah. no, none of the. Am I missing out? Something? Did they bring back a second Goosebumps TV show? I can't remember if they did. Did it's, they do yeah, that? It's on yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I need to go check that out. I, I don't know. If oh yeah, just just long. long actually, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. I. Like, remember, like, I was looking forward to it, and then I just totally, like, forgot that about it. That show is phenomenal. Um, the yeah. rumor is, apparently, in the in this, the, in the second series, it's going to be David Schwimmer. Um, okay. okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Justin, but, uh, Justin Long, the king of fucking horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, just, and I'll everything. I'll put that series back on my radar, yeah. And, <laughs> and coming up coming up closely behind him, David Dasmalchian. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, he, every horror movie is one of those two guys right now. So, yeah. there we go. But, um, Chris, what do you think here? I will definitely vote for a Goosebumps here. I love that movie, and I absolutely love the books. I love the TV show. Like, this felt like we kind of got that tease of what what Goosebumps was, and it made me happier. And I absolutely love the sequel more. And I know that's a hot take because I know a lot of people cannot stand that movie. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, Austin. Yeah, Tower Heist, another one I've seen. I saw it once when it came out in theaters, kind of forgot about it the week later. Uh, didn't do much for me. I remember that that was when they were trying to make Gabri Sidibe a thing, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> yeah, uh, for like yeah. for like two years, and that just didn't go anywhere. Uh, and yeah, uh, but uh, I remember really liking Goosebumps, and I've seen it a couple of times, actually. I, I like that movie. I, I just like the vibe of it. Uh, I think Dylan Minnette is like, you know, kind of broken out as a, a pretty decent, like, leading man and a star, and uh, yeah, he's really good in this movie, so I'll go Goosebumps pretty easily here. Yeah, so, like, I grew up a huge fan of the Goosebumps series. Like, my favorite was always Say Cheese and Die. That, that, like, I, I like that book, but there's, like, the Stay Out of the Basement one or the Monster Blood with the blood going down the staircase and all that stuff. So, like, I remember just reading all of them, especially when I was at, in elementary school, just checking them out from the library or, like, when you had those book fairs and all that stuff. But, um... But the thing is, I hated this movie. It did not, for me, capture the spirit of what Goosebumps was to me. Like, it just just seems very, very child, like, for, like, little kids and just, like, doesn't doesn't do anything uh, for me. Because, I, for me, Goosebumps, it it has a horror element to it. And it's supposed to be for, like, preteens. It's supposed to be, like, your first introduction to, like, horror and that kind of stuff. And, and it just doesn't, like, hit them. I, I, re- I read the book when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of kids do, yeah, but... But I, um, but I love the uh, TV series. The TV series was 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 great. It's got a great theme song, like the dun 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 dun, 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 dun like it's good. And, and I don't like Tower Heist really either. So this is kind of just like oh, just whatever round to me. But oh, I don't know. I don't even know what to really vote for. Just because it's got Ben Stiller in it, <laughs> I'll vote for tower heist and he's doing more like jack black isn't even in goosebumps that much so yeah he's yeah, in first one he is. You're, thinking first one he is. you're thinking the sequel yeah no. first one he is uh, he's a pretty major, major character. no he's a major character running around the, the first movie yeah he's, he's rl stein, stein running around the whole thing with him yeah yeah, yeah but the, but he's definitely yeah. the focus is more on the kids though i don't know I, I, they find him and run around with him for the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. The, the second ones were like, yeah, he has the cameo at the end in the second one. Like, Here I yeah. am. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. Was I was in the first movie. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, well, so, yeah. the second one's not in this one. Well, like, that's I was waiting for him to call me the entire time. I was well, like, that's why yeah. that's why I didn't include the second one in the tournament because yeah. yeah, he has a cameo yeah. and that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, I think the, the initial uh, trailers don't even have a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got Night of the Museum, Secret of the Tomb, which is the third one, uh, and Empire of the Sun, very early Ben Stiller uh, as a child. So, um, yeah, Zach. So I've heard a lot of good about Empire of the Sun, just haven't seen it, but I've seen all of the Night of, Night of the Museum movies, mm-hmm. and I actually do enjoy them. I, I We're probably going to get to it, but I actually think the second one is probably my favorite just because of how creative it is. But I did like the third one. And so I'm going to go with Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Malcolm, what do you say? Yeah, um, I, I honestly um, didn't realize Vince was in Empire of the Sun. Um, I just yeah, he's it, in there. He's when they get uh, to the camp. When he gets to the camp later, he shows up, but it's one of his earliest kind of prominent roles. Yeah, he's in yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean I've got no doubt about it. That I, mm-hmm. that, um, I've seen it once, just haven't gone back to it. Um, but I, I do like all the um, not the museum movies a lot, so I'm gonna go seek the tomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Chris, what do you say? Uh, I'm going to say that only because uh, it has been forever since I've seen Empire of the Sun. And just because I also really like the uh, Night of the Museum movies a lot, I'm going to go with that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Austin. Yeah, I like about half of Empire of the Sun. I like the first half. Not not a big fan of the second half. Uh, I think the movie really slows down uh, after kind of a really banger first half. Um, but yeah, I love the Night of Museum movies. I'm a big fan of that whole franchise. And uh, I don't love those posters. That poster is horrendous. Uh, that's a bad Photoshop. <laughs> like, let's cram every single character onto the poster. I hate that shit. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, cluttered mess of a poster. But uh, this isn't the posters tournament. We're voting on the posters. This is the movies. So uh, yeah, but I, I still really like all those movies, so I'll go out of jail. It reminds me when I used to make thumbnails for this that you can see the evolution of like I used to do really bad Photoshop jobs. Like <laughs> go watch our our best vehicles and from uh, movies where I just like Photoshopped them all into a racetrack and the, and they looked really <laughs> bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, but um, yeah, like I'm okay uh, with the Night at the Museum <laughs> movies. Like I. Uh, for me, they kind of have diminishing returns. I kind of like I like the first one quite a bit, and then it just kind of goes down a little bit for me. Um, but yeah, I think I'll vote for Empire of the Sun just because it's a really good, just like World War Two movie, and with 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 um, Christian Bale also as a child, and then uh, John Malkovich in there. Like I think it's pretty solid. So yeah, I'll go Empire of the Sun. Uh, GPO. Yeah, I don't mind any of the night museums. They're kind of on the line of that Madagascar series. Am I right, everybody? Oh, Chris, not even here. Um, <laughs> I did that joke just yeah. for Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's there. He's just like, and, he's doing no, the right up screen. He, he heard me say Madagascar and he, he came back. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? What? Uh, but yeah, I think they're all good. Like I said, maybe to mention returns to a degree, you know, once you've seen kind of the shtick. I, I don't really know if they bring like a hell of a lot new to each one. Um, and I really like Empire of the Sun here, you know. I, I think it's a great performance by a little mini Batman here. I think he kills it. And uh, I think it's a really interesting, riveting tale. It's Spielberg joint, so I'm going to go Empire of the Sun here. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's a close one, but uh, Night at Museum will jump into this one. We got two more on this. Or, or no, that's it on this side, so there we go. All right, we're jumping next. I forgot we skipped those cool. two earlier. <laughs> we breezed through those, uh, the School of Rock and all that, so. All right, yeah. we'll jump to the other side, and we'll see what else we got, and we'll keep pace up, keep going. Got Nacho right. Libre and the house with a clock in its walls. Mm. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, Malcolm. Um, yeah. I, I've um, really wanted to try and love Nacho Libre more than um than i do i I think it's fine i I don't hate it as much as as other people do um but house of a clock and it's it's one of those movies that was a really big surprise when it came out like um it it um it's um eli roth um which um might be his best movie maybe (laughs) honestly i'm leaning towards yes yes it might be well i mean it's I mean, it's one of those ones, like, if you're telling me that um, Eli Roth is doing a um, horror movie that's aimed at for kids, or or young adults specifically, like, I would have said you were crazy, but um, here we are. Um, And, yeah, so I think it's a really great movie. Like, you've got Kate Blanchett um, in there as well. So I'm going to go House of the Pocket as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris. Chris, what do you say? Uh, I still haven't seen uh, the house of the clock on his walls, but I really like Thanksgiving. I think the movie's freaking awesome. Uh, but yeah, I can't do Nacho Libre. The movie's just painful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
Awesome. Uh, yeah, I have seen House of Cloggin' Walls. That was a big surprise when it came out. I remember I saw it in IMAX. They played a 3D version of the Thriller video beforehand. That was a weird thing, but still fun. Uh, and then we watched the movie. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought it was a nice pleasant surprise. It does have a few horror moments in there, uh, and but it's still really good performances all around. I like it a lot, and I can't stand Nacho Libre either. I think the movie's disrespectful to the wrestling business, and I, and I don't like it, and it annoys me. So uh, House of Cloggin' Walls gets my vote. Jordan, Anderson. Yeah, <laughs> I don't believe in God. I believe in science. <laughs> um, like I'm a big fan of of Nacho Libre. I like the like like Ignacio, like the song, and they talk about that. Like it is in the Bible to wrestle your neighbor, and like like all that stuff. I, I think that it's fun. I like the little scooters he's riding around in, and the the kind of cheese ball music but it's kind of there like to make it kind of quirkier and, and all that and i do like uh, the house with, with a clock in its walls but i kind of see the writing on the wall so i'll give nacho libre a, a vote and yeah we'll go there so all right uh jpo yeah you know you, you would think nacho libre right in my alley i wanted to love it i really did it's wrestling with jack black it doesn't work for me for the most part it never has uh so yeah i'm gonna go with um again i agree with which kind of was a, the opposite of the what you would imagine on paper not a big eli roth fan um you know the examine's fine but again not nothing out of the ordinary um and yeah i kind of went into this with you know lowish expectations but it, i think there's a reason jack black and even kate blanchett signed on she's usually smart with her picks and uh yeah i think it is his best film all right yeah so. yeah that so this is interesting because I've seen Nacho Libre, but it's been so long that I don't remember a single thing about it. And I've never seen a house with a clock in its walls. But I might go with that one because I'm more interested in seeing that one over Nacho Libre. So basically it's like in, uh, essentially two movies I've never seen. So I'm going with the house with the clock, the clock in its walls. All right. Yeah. So there we go. Going with that, and we'll go down to Kung Fu Panda 4, that is, got cut off, the <laughs> most recent one, uh, and The Watch. <laughs> uh, I've got a, quite a conundrum on this one, but Chris is up first. <laughs> uh, Chris? Uh, I've never seen Kung Fu Panda 4, so I can't really vote on it, uh, but I actually kind of dig The Watch. I know a lot of people on here don't, so I don't care. I'm going with that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, the awesome. Watch? Okay. Uh, yeah, the watch. I I I did not enjoy like at all when it came out. I thought that movie was pretty painfully bad uh, and and not great. I I I'm in a conundrum here though because I have not seen Kung Fu Panda four yet. I didn't get a chance to go see it, but it has an Aquafina problem. <laughs> so I'm that's why I'm hesitant to go sit down in the theater with ninety minutes and watch her be the sidekick for the entire movie. Uh, so I, I I almost don't know what to do here. Uh, Maybe my love of the character of Poe will overcome this one because yeah, I, I just didn't like the watch at all. So I'll go, I'll go Kung Fu Panda, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I haven't seen Kung Fu Panda four either. I'm kind of like, kind of like, like I don't know, like like needing a little break from Kung Fu Panda before I get, I go back to it. So I'll see it. I just maybe not in theaters. I'll see it when it comes on like streaming or something. But. Um, but uh, I actually like the watch also. Like, like yeah, like I, I think that it, that's pretty funny. I think I think Jonah Jonah Hill is uh, pretty uh, uh, funny when he's like I don't know the exact quote, but he's, but he's like like hear my words and read his lips, read my words and see his mouth, or like these are doing the little th like that thing there. And then uh, I'm a big Richard Ayoade fan, like the like British guy in it, and. And like I wish he would be in more stuff because he's really good. He's got a couple of series that that I, I used to watch that uh, are no longer a thing. But he had like a Gadget Man and a Travel Man show that I watched all the time. That that was fun. Uh, and yeah, like I have fun with it. So yeah, I'll go with the watch. Uh, JPO. I, I agree with Richard Arwadi. Can't agree with too much of the rest there. I mean, unfortunately, I think I'll give the watch my vote just because I haven't seen Kung Fu Four yet. Um, you know, we'll see how it stands. But yeah, I um, <laughs> was I'll go, I'll go with that because I've seen it. But yeah, I was a big fan of the watch. Yeah, 
uh, Zach. So it's funny. I'm surprised by the love for the watch because this is a movie it's, that it's not love. It's more like a default, folks. No, well, I was going to say <laughs> this is an example of a movie that I love people it. Do not like that. I actually think is better than expected. So I actually enjoyed watching it. Um, it has its moments, and I haven't seen Kung Fu Kung Fu Panda Four yet. And but uh, I'm going to go with the watch. It's almost like a weird, like it has a lot of similarities to um, oh, what's the the uh, Cornetto trilogy one where they fight aliens. The I'm like having end. a brain fart. Yeah, the world's end. It's got like some vibes of no, that. No, it's no, not, it's, no, 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 not it's even close. Yeah, it does. No. Not even no. close. They're fighting aliens alien like that, part, and they got a no. British guy. That's it. No. That's, That's it. Right. That's <laughs> The yeah, world's end is a vastly, vastly superior film. Yeah, no. I, I, I just have to stifle my laughter just because of that comparison, I, and I knew what Pez was going to say, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I, I just don't get the hate for this movie, but anyway. It's, well, uh, you know, be funnier, movie, and I wouldn't hate you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, Malcolm. I mean, at least you guys are able to see Kung Fu Panda 4 because it's out in America. It's not even out over here. Yet. Oh, damn. It comes out officially next week. Wow. Um, so I'm, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even watch it for this, even if I wanted to. Um, but I also don't want to vote for the watch, so Kung Fu Panda 4. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I was. But the watch will... Lose to the House of Clock on his walls in the next round. So, we'll yeah. and uh, got to see a battle the Smithsonian and uh, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm up first. Yeah, this is a this is an interesting one because again, I, I like the Night Museum movies a lot, and yeah, the Battle of the Smithsonian might be my favorite one. I like that movie a lot. Amy Adams is great in it. Uh, I thought Super Mario Brothers was, was good. It's it's watchable. Uh, yeah, I'll go down to the museum because I, I see where this might go a certain way, but I'll, I'll just so it doesn't get shut out. We'll see, uh, Jordan. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm still just okay on then at the museum, but like I thought tomorrow Brothers movie was awesome. I saw it three times in, in theaters because I'm a big Mario fan. The most of it had to do with the animation style. Like I think that they spot on got the the animation style down and like the world that they created and all that, which is fun to see. And so I'm totally down for whatever they want to do. I've heard rumors of a Kirby movie or a or like one based around Yoshi or Donkey Kong stuff like that. And and like I'm here for it. And and yeah, like like I'm a sucker for anything Mario. Like any game that comes out Mario, I buy it whether or not I have time to play it. Even <laughs> I just buy it anyways. Um, and, and yeah, like I didn't mind Chris Pratt because they like had him in there, but they had Charles Martinet kind of doing some, like uh, some little things here and there. And they, and I like that they bring him in, into the real world and then, uh, they go on like a cool and fun adventure. And I even like, I don't love Seth Rogen's voice as Donkey Kong, but the, the dynamic that the two of them have with him and Mario kind of works for me. And, and not the museum is fun. I think that's good, but I just like the Super Mario Brothers movie better, so I'll go with that. Uh, JPO. Yeah, um, that's a close one for me here. I, again, I don't mind any of the nine museums, but I do think Super Mario Brothers has been overrated, but it's probably one I would go back to more. I think I have a little bit of a better time with. I think it zips along a little bit nicer, so I'll go Super Mario Brothers here. Yeah, and I've heard, it got to the point out that the, the little sadistic star, where it's like, like there's no hope. Like like yay, more meat for the meat grinder. Like the little star was like the stand up. But uh huh, Zach. So Super Mario Brothers was actually in my top ten of last year. Um, but despite that, I said it earlier that Battle at the Smithsonian was is actually my favorite of the Night of the Museum movies. And so I'm going to go with Night of the Museum, even though I wish we would have gotten Peaches maybe in Best Original Song and we could have had I'm Just Ken versus Peaches, but the Oscars, that would have been interesting. Yeah, that song's fun, but it's very basic, like to me, very basic. But uh, uh, Malcolm, what do you say? Um, yeah, I mean, both those songs would have lost the rock. Um, the other Barbie song anyway, um, but um, <laughs> I, I look, I, I'm glad the Peach song that wasn't nominated. It, 
it was really annoying, annoying after a while. Um, like it, it's fun the first couple of times, it just felt really weird. But, um, but yeah, um, I'm not a big um Mario Brothers fan at all. Like, um, I never really cared for the characters, but I, I still, I eventually saw saw some Mario Brothers movies and was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, I do really like Battle of the Smithsonian as well, but I just by here I'm gonna go to Mario Brothers. That song that that won for uh, Barbie, I barely even remember that song from the movie. So I'm just like, like some like Billie Eilish song or something. I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> but but um, Chris, <laughs> you say, I uh, I'm. I really like all the uh, Night Museum movies, and I think the second one is definitely an awesome sequel. But I absolutely love the uh, Super Mario Bros. movie, and I wish I'd had the money. And I'm st- and I still want to pick it up. But the uh, 4K uh, steelbook for uh, mm-hmm. Super Mario Bros. is absolutely gorgeous. That oh, Walmart nice. came out with it's it's uh-huh. fucking sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also had a pretty cool popcorn bucket for it that that like that question mark block or whatever. Ooh, that that's yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, JPO we got another one where uh, Jack Black dies. We got Mars attacks. <laughs> there we get zapped. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, Never Ending Story three, another nineties one where he plays the main bully. If anybody forgot <laughs> forgot uh-huh. about this movie, but he's in there. Probably one of the better things about it, honestly. <laughs> uh, <Jordan. laughs> um. Yeah, I've never seen the Neverending Story three. <laughs> it's not like I kind of like I've only seen the first one, <laughs> but uh, and I've seen the first one a lot because the first one's really good. Um, but um, so maybe someday I'll get to if we do like something about sequels, which we might do best like like third like installment in in a series, maybe for a tournament, maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, Mars Attacks is a lot of fun, and I mean. I don't really remember Jack Black a whole lot in it, but I guess he he's in there and he dies. And I have seen the movie, and the movie's he's, uh, great. He's shaven. He's got those uh, skull cut. He's the, he's the military he guy. He gets zapped. Yeah. He grabs. Oh the yeah, American right. Yeah, he's the military guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah and it, and yeah, but yeah, Mars Attacks is great. Like I, I love that movie. So yeah, I'll, I'll go Mars Attacks. Uh, GPU. Um, yeah, so for the first time of tonight, because I'm I'm pretty complete on this list, but for the first time I will, or I guess the second time now, I'll say the, the movie I have seen, because <laughs> uh, yeah. never ending story. Uh, I just, I've never seen any of the trilogies here. I just know, was it Falcorn or Treyu? Uh, is that yeah. what it is? Yeah, the Treyu. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do recommend the um, Falcor or Treyu song on Lonely Island, where they have sex with each other. Fal- yeah, that's good. Treyu. Fal- Ooh, Treyu. Ooh, Treyu. Anywho. Um, <laughs> So that's all I know about it. Um, but yeah, Mars Attacks fun. Great cast yeah. here. You can see some people in the cast here. You know, Nicholson playing dual parts. Um, Michael J. Fox. There's a Parker on a dog's head. Jack Black. Natty Ports. It's, yeah, it's good stuff. Good fun. Uh, wacky Tim Burton one. Uh, so what is it? Ack Ack? Let's go for Mars Attack. Ack Ack Ack. Ack Ack Ack. And the great Ack, Ack. Slim yeah. Whitman <laughs> that defeats the aliens. The great, I say, Slim Whitman. Anyways. I'm surprised we didn't get more more toys out of that. Like those are cool aliens for like toys and stuff. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sure they're out there. Yeah, I'm sure there's some. Yeah, but but uh, Zach, what do you say? I do have one. I'll show you in a second. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. Uh-huh. So, so this is this is a pretty pretty easy matchup for me. Um, I've never seen any of the Never Ending Story movies, um, but I have seen Mars Attacks, and it's a kooky wild ride, and I enjoyed it. So Mars Attacks. Yeah. Never ending story. That like newfound glory song I always think about. <laughs> oh, I know that too then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh Malcolm. Um Yeah, no, I was um yeah, I also haven't got around to Never Ending Story Three. Um I've seen the first one multiple times and every time I go around to go to try and watch the um the sequels they've been taken off um the streaming services yeah. um <laughs> but um but yeah i i love my text i think it's great and um i was, I was looking at um the pictures of um jack black from the movie they kind of i i can kind of see a slight resemblance to pierce <laughs> i mean it might just be me but it is i've kind of looked a bit like yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he has he has his head shaved in the movie, so it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um Chris, what do you say? So I I like yeah, wow, I can't really talk. Um I really like the uh, never ending <laughs> story movies, but uh as far as them go, I cannot stand number three. I think the movie's horrible. Uh, I mean, uh, one's really good, two's decent, and then three just kind of, like, it just sucks horribly. But uh, Mars Attacks mm-hmm. is a great movie. I seriously wish we could get a 4K already. Mm-hmm. Although I was just looking on eBay, and apparently there is a Blu-ray steelbook of it. But apparently mm-hmm. it's it's pretty freaking rare. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Nice. So, so uh, you're going from Mars Attacks? Uh, yes, yeah. sorry. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, Never Ending Story 3 is not great. Uh, Jack Black's the best thing about it uh, as the bully. But, uh, yeah, I love Mars Attacks. Jacob and I, over on a podcast about movies, just talked about Mars Attacks. You can go uh, check out that nice. episode and see us talk about it. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that movie. I love it. And I'll show you that there there was some toys. My sister made me this. I was going to blow it up and show you real quick. Say, yeah, I'll say uh, full screen. Sweet. So, yeah, yeah. So, she made me this thing to hold my ticket stubs at one point when I was still doing, like, saving ticket stubs from movies. Uh, but yeah. you can see over on the right, there's the alien right there. She just stuck the, the figure That's in there. Awesome. <laughs> And then That's made like cool. a little Star Wars background, so she made me kind of a little sci-fi thing. Uh, but with one it's of the funny, and me and my ex-wife had a yeah. shadow box thing of like ticket stubs too. Yeah. But then they really kind of don't do ticket stubs. They anymore. don't really do it anymore because everything's on the app now. So I don't yeah. really do like physical ticket stubs. Which you know, I still love collecting those. I did a Doug Loves movies one time. I went to one of those and got picked out with my name tag because I made it out of ticket stubs. It was pretty fun. Have them sign that. That's I still cool. have that uh-huh. somewhere. Uh, but yeah, easily Mars tax here. So yeah, uh, my oldest ticket stub I found. Was from my favorite Martian. I don't know when that movie came out. It's like the late nineties or something. But uh, yeah. ninety seven. Yeah. 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 I <laughs> uh, got Jumanji. Welcome to the Jungle and King Kong. So Jack Black. Jack Black uh, here. Uh, so we'll go to uh, JPO. We'll back down to you. Ah, no, because I think I voted against Jumanji before, and I feel bad doing it twice. <laughs> I do like those two films. So they are fun. Pretty, pretty basic way to have fun here, and I have everyone kind of play against type. Um, Jack, I think, speaking of Jack Black, I think he kind of steals the show too in both movies. Um, but yeah, but also, like, speaking of Jack Black, you know, kudos to him for, um, and kudos to Peter Jackson because I believe he was just offered the role. Like, it wasn't one that, like, he fought for or auditioned a bunch of times. Um, so it's kind of cool that Peter Jackson saw something in him, uh, to play that role because I think he's really good in it. And yeah, I know it's a bit long, and I don't know, I'm sure someone else will say that here, but I was along for the two ride, and I think that the good is really good. So I'll go with King Kong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Zach, what do you say? So, so this is a tough matchup because I do like Welcome to the Jungle, but I also really like King Kong, and I think Jack Black is actually really good in it, as well as the rest of the cast. And again, it's a fun adventure, and it's just uh, heart pounding at some points, but also just a lot of action. And I'm going to go with King Kong. Yeah, uh, Malcolm. Yeah, this is really tough for me. The, these are um, really high on, on my list when I ranked um, the, all the movies that are in here. Um, and um, yeah, um, but I'm going to vote against the movie I I personally directed and go to Manchu Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yep, that tracks. Uh, Chris, what do you say? Uh, between the two movies, uh, I gotta definitely go with uh, "Welcome to the Jungle." I think it's really good. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, awesome. I don't know where to go here. This is this is close because I know we we some people kind of bag on King Kong. I I just only really bag on that first like forty five minutes or an hour. Like it just takes a while to get going. Uh, once I get to the island, it's awesome. I like all the monster stuff there. So there's some nightmare fuel sequences uh, on there with like the slugs and whatnot. And like there's some good stuff there. Um, you know, it just kind of takes a while to get going. And Jumanji's good too. Um, so this is this is fairly close. Um, I think I'll give it to King Kong because he seems to get shit on here a lot. My favorite's still Kong Skull Island, and I like the 76 one as well. But uh, I'll, I'll give some love to King Kong. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I'll probably go for Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, because for me, the, that first half of King Kong is so boring that it just kind of, like, I don't know. It doesn't really, like, like, take me out of it. That's not really, like, the best word, but for lack of a term, it's just kind of, like, 
like it takes me out of that first half and then and then I'm all in for the for the second half but it just um but yeah Jumundi welcome to the jumbo was, was a huge surprise I mean um you know me I'm a big Karen Gillan fan she's my my favorite crush from Scotland uh and uh there's a podcast that I that I watched is called Last Meals. That is where they have like celebrity eat their whatever would be their last meal, and they had Karen Gillan on there, and you really get to hear that Scottish accent that you don't hear much because she does a lot of like American accents and, and stuff. And 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 at one point she's almost hard to understand. It's kind of thick, but um, but yeah, I love the cast all around on Jum Jumanji, so I'll go with, with that one. All right, so we have another tie, and we're up to Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I would basically say, like, don't be a joke. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> um, you know, what? I'm gonna keep it well, my vote for Adam Jungle. <laughs> okay, yeah, gotcha. all right. So, going down to airborne and flirting with disaster. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll start with uh, Zach. Uh, of course, you have to start with me. Because uh, it, it's your favorite drinking game. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen. I, I, I don't blame you for this one. Airborne. If you saw it in the nineties, saw it in the nineties. It became around to it late. I get it. And flirting with disasters. I not mean, one of his like biggest movies. So I get it. That's fine. Um, I'm just gonna go with my vote. I'm gonna go with Airborne just because of the poster. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Sometimes that's what you got to do. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm, what do you say? Um, don't feel bad, Zach, because I also haven't seen it. It's super <laughs> um, like the in um, at least um, both of these I did try to find for, for these, um, but they're not um, I don't know if it's a case of they just are very hard to find, especially or distributors just don't want to put them on. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the one I'm probably slightly more intrigued by is probably Flirting with Disaster, so I'll go Flirting with Disaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Chris, what do you say? Uh, I haven't, I also haven't seen either one of these movies, oh. but uh, mm -hmm. between them, I think the I think the cast for uh, Flirting with Disaster sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, go with Austin, one. yeah, I haven't yeah. seen Flirting with Disaster, I've heard about it. Uh, yeah, good little cast there, early David O. Russell, so I'm, I'm interested, but I love Airborne. I, I that came on a lot in the 90s on cable. I, I own it on Vudu, so I mean, I, I, I bought it a while back. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really fun, it's definitely like early 90s with the with the rollerblading and the surfing and you know and, and you know the the styles and whatnot but it's actually a really fun kind of entertaining movie some good performances yeah seth green's a lot of fun uh jack black's great uh there's sneaky like good little character actor cast uh the chick from waiting uh lana Ubeck is in it uh she's also meet, meet, the, meet the fuckers uh yeah uh eden, eden mcclurg yeah. yeah she's fun as like kind of the mom that, that, that he stays with uh, she's fun um so i'm gonna go airborne yeah, yeah i like i like that movie he's, he's really yeah i mean you you can look up some scenes on YouTube with Jack Black and whatnot and get a vibe for it. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Flirting with Disaster either. It's just uh, one that I want to see based on the cast and stuff. Like it, uh, And it, it sounds pretty interesting. It's like a road trip movie in a way, sort of. But, um, but um, Airborne, yeah, that movie – it's a lot of fun. Like I'm actually shocked. It seems like the kind of movie I would would have grown up with and watched all the time, but but I didn't see it till like about four or five years ago, and and uh, it was really really good. And yeah, that that main kid, that uh, Shane McDermott, never he hasn't done anything since. He kind of stopped. He didn't do anything since the mid '90s, and he's a good looking dude. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't get like more work because he's a good, I know. strapping tall young fellow, yeah. but he didn't. Yeah, right. Work. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> some people it's just not their thing. I don't know, but. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm a big Seth Green fan, and of course Jack Black, and I think the movie's fun. You get some kind of like extreme sports kind of stuff in there, because I think in the premise, like I don't know if I'm like like mixing up with like some of these Disney Channel movies. Did he move from California somewhere and like and like he moves to California to Ohio, so he can't surf anymore. So he yeah, he can't surf anymore. So he skates, yeah, and they play yeah, hockey. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it feels like there's a lot of like there's at least like a couple of Disney Channel movies with with like similar premises. I feel kind like. of similar to Brink a little bit, just with the skating and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, but but yeah, I'll go with with Airborne. All right, uh, uh, Jiku. Yeah, so hopefully this is the last 
time, um, I'll say it. Yeah, Airborne unfortunately is a blind spot for me here, and it sounds like something I'd enjoy too because you know I'm down for some Jack Black, and I actually really am a big Seth Green fan. He's, uh, <laughs> he, he's like his best friend in there, or his cousin. Like he hangs out with him the whole movie. He's really yeah. funny in the movie. Actually, he's very very funny. Yeah. So if, if you find it anywhere, yeah. even to rent it or buy it, it's, I think it's worth it. I think you'd like. I want yeah, I'd, like like uh, Malcolm said, I did look it up because I wanted to finish my blind spots that I could have. Um, mm-hmm. so, Panda, obviously, but yeah, I can no one had it. Um, so yeah, I do want to find it at some point. Um, am I the only one that's all flirting with disaster? <laughs> Maybe, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, it does, it does get my vote here. It's actually a very early, uh, David O. Russell flick, uh, who of course, yeah. Silver Linings yeah. playbook, The Fighter, and it's got that kind of sense of humor. If you ever saw, um, Silver Linings or even like I Heart Huckabee, it's got a very weird, he's got a weird, fun sense of humor. <laughs> uh, so I do like it too, and also really good, um, performances by, um, Josh Brolin's really funny in this. I think he has like a an armpit fetish. That's a thing in the movie, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just it's a it's a it's actually a pretty decently funny flick. So I do recommend uh, flirting with disaster. Yeah. Oh, and it also fucked me though because uh, I believe you had it on scene and heard one time, and I couldn't remember the fucking name of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got whatever the like. The opposite of an armpit fetish is the anti-armpit thing. Get those well, away from JBL, me. that's how you know uh, Jordan, again, yeah. doesn't have a bias to seeing her because it was a movie he hadn't seen and he hadn't seen it her. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. That's yeah. how you, you know it's yeah. random. It was there. Well, that's yeah. all the that I haven't seen, for sure. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. Uh, but we have a tie, and uh, we'll scoot it on up to uh, Chris Scott. What you got? On this um, you know what? Uh, just <laughs> because... Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to go with the Alfredo Disaster because that still sounds like a more drinking movie to me. Okay. Uh, I think you'd like it. I think it's fine. By the, way, it's like- uh, by the way, Jordan, Shane McDermott apparently I found. I tried uh, to find him on Shane, by the way. He, um, yeah. Shane McDermott, if, if you move to Galveston, Texas, he can be your real estate agent. So that's where you can. Oh, he's oh, doing real estate there. Huh? He's doing real estate in Texas. So you can go find him there and buy Go house. track him down. Wow. Right. Him once or yeah. Get him that's to sign your popular. airborne uh, DVD from eBay. Yeah. <laughs> and and if, if that doesn't suit you, Pez, go to a different, I think, Ohio, and you can find Mordecai from the WWE selling you a house. Oh, there you go. What? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, Kevin Thorne, Thorne Mordecai. That's right. That's right. right. And he'll legitimately give you, a, if you buy from him, he'll give you like a replica belt. Nice. What <laughs> that? Nice. That is cool. Yeah. That's that's like in uh, that's like in Little Giants when Ed O'Neill gives everybody who buys a Chevy like a football autograph football because he's a high yes. trophy winner. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like the same thing. <laughs> or who? What you got, baby? Uh, so it got cut off a little bit. That's Greenberg. The uh, okay. uh, uh, what's her name? The chicken did Bar- What's her name? Did Barbie? I think yeah, her her movie. Uh, Wait. Greg Greenberg. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, Long Came Polly. Uh, so no. Greta Grunberg, not Greta yeah. Greenberg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's called uh-huh. Greenberg. That's what the movie yeah. is. Uh, Malcolm. Uh-huh. Gerwig. Um, Neither one of you are right. Greta Gerwig. Greta Gerwig. <laughs> Whatever. I don't remember her name. Gerwig. That's what it is. I'm not Gerwig. a big fan. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I've. I've, She's I've just seen... in it, by the way. It's a Noah Baumbach movie. Just, just so you guys know. Stop. Yeah. Well, they're, yeah. they're together. They get them as a pair. <laughs> I thought you were saying it was a Gerwig film. I'm just making sure. That's oh, the second okay. Noah Baumbach movie on here because it's Don't Worry. Or wait, no, what was the, the other one? Is an, there's another Noah Baumbach movie on here. I, I, oh, it's um, the Mayor. It hasn't come the out Mayor yet. Witch stories. Yeah, it yeah. Come it hasn't come up yet. Oh, yeah. Meyer yeah. We, we do yeah. have some crossover. Jake Kasdan has like four movies on here because he's done Jack Black a bunch of times. Yeah, we had same guy did Goosebumps. Is Young Young's really good too, by the way? I don't know if it is. I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I don't think it was, but just shout out to while we're young. Really good. Way better than Greenberg. Yeah. Sorry, sports. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm. I remember. Um, I've, I've seen um, Greenberg once. Um, I do quite like it. I, I do um, want to um, revisit and sit, give it another watch. Um, and yeah, I do, I've also been alongside Polly is a really um, kind of a. Um, Sweet movie as well, but I'm going to go slightly to Greenberg here. Yeah, oh, Chris, what do you say? Uh, I, as as much as I cannot stand Along Came Polly, the movie has to be one of the stupidest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> but I uh, I hated Barbie, so I can't give it to anything she touches. It's not allowed, basically. Even if she's just. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, never mind. You're right. I'll yeah. I'll vote that one well, over along came Paul. Yeah, I still couldn't vote for that thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll sure, go yeah. with the other movie. <laughs> yeah. Greenberg? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, Austin. <laughs> I haven't gone back to Alon K. Pauly in a long time. It, it's been a minute. I, I mostly remember Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, just yeah, being silly and kind of fun in that movie. I saw Greenberg in theaters, but I can't remember if I liked it or not. I just remember just being kind of there. <laughs> uh, I saw it just as it was at the theater I really liked to go to. There's a little indie theater that was there I just really liked. So I saw it. Uh, it's, I don't know. I, I guess I'll go Along Came Polly. I don't know. I'm more likely to revisit that one probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of like the the same way except for I haven't seen Greenberg, but it's a blind spot. But, uh, but I'm kind of like, for Along Came Polly, I'm, I'm like, I guess I'll see it. I mean, Philip Seymour Hoffman, he's always a scene stealer whenever he's in anything. Like, like he was great. So, so rest in peace uh, to PSH. <laughs> uh, but... Um, yeah, and and just like there's certain scenes where like that, like when he sharded, like I think that was the first time I, that like a, a lot of people had heard that term. <laughs> and I almost feel like maybe he in, they invented it for this movie. I don't know, oh. but uh, uh, but uh, and then the basketball scene where they're getting all sweaty and all, and all that, it, it, that slow mo thing, it looks kind of gross but funny. Uh, and yeah, I'll go with Along Came Polly, but it's not like like over the moon about it or anything. So. Yeah, but uh, GPO. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. So Greenberg, I have a really back and forth relationship with Noah Baumbach because, like, I really love Merritt's story. I like Mary Meyerwood's stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I like his stories movies. But, like, White Noise last year did not work for me uh, with Adam Driver two years ago. Um, I also wasn't Margot at the Wedding. This reminds me of Margot at the Wedding. Just not uh, that much fucking happens. You know what I mean? It's just one of those kind of home <laughs> movies where it's like you're transporting the life of, you know, a guy kind of going through a midlife-ish crisis and whatnot, but it's not very funny. It's just it's just kind of okay. It's not bad. Like a slice of life movie. movie or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like you gotta, there's got to be a – got to find an aspect because it's one of those slice of life movies where I was like, I need a different life of slice here. I need to yeah. More <laughs> yeah. Slice that. Yeah, different movie. slice um, of pie. <laughs> and while not all the comedy works on King Polly – Enough worse words, yeah. It's something I would revisit more here. I think Phil Summer Hoffman is one of the reasons I'm a huge fan of his because I think he is kind of a he, he knows that this is a funny, wacky piece of working comedy and he's chooses scenery. He's a lot of fun here. He's got a great scene at the end where he, he's um replacing Ben Siller at his job and he's like convincing them to you know hire the guy for like insurance and whatnot. It's really funny. And, and uh, yeah, that scene of him uh when the sweaty guy's belly, it's very true. Uh, at wrestling yeah. practice, first time I was into a headlock with a shirtless guy, and I just remember being like, "Oh, lock him, Polly. It's very right. It's just fucking nasty. I wanted to throw up." <laughs> yeah. Um, like, can we uh, put your shirt on, or can we stop yeah. doing headlock takes down for a little while? So I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah. <on to> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Zach. So I'm gonna go with the long came Polly um, because I haven't seen Greenberg, but also it came in that three. Uh, movie pack with that, uh, that tracks. That yeah. tracks. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> well, and the third, movie, the third movie is Mystery Men, so that's the three that it. There you go. Yeah. Um, Interesting. <laughs> and I thought it was oh, I thought it was good to okay when I saw it, so I'm gonna go with Along Came Polly. Yeah. Okay, Along well, Came Polly, and we'll go down to uh the original madagascar and the original night of the museum uh all right. so <laughs> all right uh so two of uh ben stiller's starting points for some franchises here uh chris this one's actually really tough for me because i love both of these movies so much but uh i think i'm gonna give it to uh, madagascar here okay yeah um austin yeah, um, yeah, a little bit tougher than you might think, uh, but again, I, I said the second Madagascar is, I think, an improvement over the first one, uh, and probably my favorite. Um, I, yeah, I, that, that first night in the museum, I remember seeing it in theaters and just and it being really pleasantly surprised by it, and thinking it was a lot of fun. Really good seeing Dick Van Dyke and, and Bill Cobb, yeah, and Rooney, like running around that movie. And Ricky Gervais is kind of the really sarcastic, you know, dry witted manager, like, he's a lot of fun. And Carlo Gugino, who doesn't love Carlo Gugino? Come on now, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, I, I like Night of the Museum, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with it. I've met Carlo Gugino. Good Gino, she's even better in person. <laughs> um, I, yeah, God, I wish, <laughs> Jeez. yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh. Yeah, like um, Madagascar is like in the good territory. For, like any of the the uh, installments, like like they're not good, not great, but uh, for me. But uh, the first night at the museum, I really like a lot. Like I think that the the first one kind of introduces you to all all different characters you're gonna get later on. You get Robin Williams in there. Uh, you get you get the the like 
like the big Easter Island, like the, Hey, dum dum, you bring me gum gum guy. And then, and then you get like the monkey, you get like the Owen Wilson's character, all that. And, and so it's fun for the first time. And then I'm kind of like, all right, I've kind of been there, done that. Like, I don't really necessarily really wanted any kind of sequels, but, and, but we got them and they're, they're all right. But, but the first one is uh, really solid. So I'll go with it. Night at the museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, JPO. Mm, gum, gum, yeah. gum, gum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, both of these are pretty fine and watchable movies here. You know, pretty good examples of like good PG flicks to show the kids as well, if you want. But uh, yeah, yeah, one I'd go back to more that it just has got a really just fun, unique premise is Night at the Museum here. Uh, you know, again, kind of like, you know, his buddies pop up, Owen Wilson, Steve Coogan, you know, Robin Williams. I think it's just a lot of fun that I would go back to more. So, Night at the Museum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Zach? Uh, I'm going to go with Night at the Museum. I find it to be more uh, entertaining and fun, and you have these great, uh, a great variety of characters that you uh, meet and interact with. So, Night at the Museum. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm? Yeah, both of these are really entertaining, but I'm also going to follow the um, bad and go for Night at the Museum. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. Night at the so, Museum. OG Night at the Museum. Go down to Dodgeball and the D train. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Anybody who who who's seen the D train and wants to vote for it? <laughs> I've seen it. it? Yes. Don't want to vote oh, for it. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. So I think we'll just we, dodge ball through. That movie does not train not go the way you think that movie is going to go. By the way. No. <laughs> yeah. No. That train derails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've seen dodgeball a lot, but for good reason. Derails. I uh, still got Madagascar two and Starsky and Hutch. Uh, so, uh, we'll go me first. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just mentioned it a minute ago, but yeah, the second one, uh, is my favorite of the series. It's got the best sort of gags and jokes and, uh, you know, the jokes that the adults will get. We were just rewatching it again with my niece the other day because we wanted to put on a movie instead of more Coco Melon. So I was like, can we watch a movie instead? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we saw Madagascar 2 on like Prime or something. I was like, yeah, let's watch that. That's a better thing to watch than Coco Melon songs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, no, it's good stuff. Still holds up. And, uh, yeah, Stark and Hutch has its moments, but I haven't gone back to it in a long, long time. So probably for good reason. I'll say Madagascar 2. Yeah, like nowadays if you have – Young kid, it's either Coco Melon or, or it's Miss Rachel. You ever seen that? Yeah, one? no, yeah, no. She's out of Miss Rachel phase. She's onto this other lady who does other songs. But uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's another lady who does songs with a guitar. Uh, she's a little more like, uh, you know, you step up to like the next year bracket. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, right. Yeah. Just a little, uh, little, it yeah, won't be right. Family Guy's Jewish obsession with that. Um, person who sings blue beetles <laughs> oh yeah yeah so that goes to track them down so yeah I, I definitely get an education on what the toddlers are watching nowadays it's interesting yeah <laughs> uh, we, uh, with like a niece that young yeah <laughs> would you look at, at what the most viewed uh, videos on on all of youtube are they're all like kids stuff they it's like, like baby shark stuff. and shit like that yeah yeah, yeah it's <laughs> that but but uh for this one like i'm just so okay on the madagascar movie so i'll say do it let's vote for star and hutch just do it so yeah, uh, JPO. Oh, Chris, I can finally champion a Madagascar film. Are we friends? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, we are, buddy. He made a lot of films. In o- is this another O four one? Starsky, by the way, is this one. Starsky's O four. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that was one of his what six that we talked about, like O four <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're talking ridiculous. Half of them aren't good, and this is one that I didn't love. Here, uh, yeah. it might be, it might be better upon rewatch. You know, I think I did kind of like it better the second time, but uh, yeah, I just remember just it just didn't totally work for me. Um, but yeah, my favorite too. I think I do agree. If I had to pick one of the main franchise of the first three, it's the one I might go back to the most. I think it has the best heart. As well as the last, so I'll go back to guess where too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Zach. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give a hot take. Um, I actually think Starsky and Hutch is the best collaboration of Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller. And that is and that is the movie I'm voting for. You vote more than Meet the Parents? Yeah. Or Wedding Crashers? Who <laughs> are the museum? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, yeah. the, the second would probably be Zoolander, but like again, oh, yeah. and Zoolander first. No, but yeah, I, I I like I like this collaboration more than the others. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Malcolm, I mean, I don't have that much of a hot take, um, but um, I do. Um, 
I actually watched Starting in Patch for the first time when we did the 2004 Data series, um, and I actually qu do quite like it. Um, like, just the way Pez is with the Cape Panda movies, I'm the same with the Madagascar. Like, I really like the first one. The sequels to me, um, are not as good, so I'm gonna go Starsky and Hutch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, Chris. Uh, Chris, Zach, don't you know I'm the king of hot takes here? Uh, but, but I don't <laughs> yeah. really dig Starsky and Hutch, I think it was just kind of just okay. Uh, but yeah, I love I love a Madagascar too. Surprised I knew you guys all knew where I was going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, well, Madagascar so too. I just remembered the the like hippo with the ghetto booty just shaking her booty around <laughs> but anyway. uh, uh we have a tie to me and i'm gonna put through my favorite of the series madagascar 2 so there you go uh all right i'm going down to meet the parents speaking of uh, owen wilson and ben stiller and uh the heartbreak kid uh, so do we meet the parents or what <laughs> uh, maybe yeah Any, anybody gonna stick there you know i like Shawn michaels but you know i'm, I'm a fan but uh actually, Heartbreak Kid is, this movie makes me boring. that much more mad is because it's named Heartbreak Kid. i hate this movie <laughs> yeah, yeah right how dare you besmirch the nickname of the it great really Shawn michaels <laughs> that's right no, he's, <laughs> i fucking hate the character like you do not work for this fucking douchebag like no, oh my God, no. no. i mean also how many ben stiller posted is just a white background. <laughs> oh, yeah, a, right. Like, well, and, 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 and look at his facial expression in both these posters. The same. Yeah, like, the staring same. ahead with like a with like just a, a blank now, stare. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What, Green, Greenberg was like, oh, oh yeah. I mean, he's kind of looking up, but he's kind of staring. <laughs> Wonky Paul, he's just kind of staring. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. He's just kind of staring there. What else we got here? Well, look on the yeah, other side. Yeah, right. He's just kind of staring forward with the a blank watch. face there. Hey, Ben, use use some expressions every now. And then. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we need to go back on the other side and look at that as we go through. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, got heavyweights uh, and envy. I mean, that one he's kind of staring, but he's giving the oh, look at this guy look. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so heavyweights and envy. Uh, Jordan, go first. Um. Yeah. Envy, I think is 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 okay. I think that like Jack Black and Ben Stiller are really trying to do something like the and like and like trying to like do the best they can i think it's like probably like a writing issue and like just the way the movie's put together is just stupid i think but um uh, so if they would have i don't know i think there was like potential that didn't quite get there for me and uh heavyweights is just awesome that's like a movie i definitely grew up with watched it all the time but when i was a kid i didn't realize that it was even ben stiller until i was a little older until i was like a teenager i'm like wait a minute that's freaking ben stiller like this movie's just got 10 times better for me and uh, yeah like it's it's awesome and um yeah tony perkis is like a great uh kind of like antagonist guy and uh, so yeah I'll, I'll vote for heavyweights pretty easy yeah. uh yeah like jpo uh, so this is the final time. I was like, I thought there was one more I hadn't seen. It's actually Heavyweights. For whatever reason, just never was something that came across. And uh, again, I didn't see it streaming anywhere. Uh, so I haven't seen that one here. Uh, I have seen Envy. Not a big fan almost at all. So I'm going to do very, very rarely will I do this. I'm going to give the Heavyweights. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that I like about Envy is when the merry-go-round goes out of whack, and he's like trying to like stop that crazy merry-go-round. <laughs> Apparently, um, if you have Disney Plus, JPO, it's on Disney Plus. Heavyweights is. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Know that's why I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got you. If you don't have it right now, I, I would understand. Yeah, it's it's on there. Uh, yeah. But uh, Zach. So uh, these are actually two movies that I saw for this tournament. Mm -hmm. Um. And. I actually gave them about the same score, which was like middle. Just, I thought, uh, I think Heavyweights is a better movie and I'm going to vote for it. But I will say that I think Ben Stiller and Jack Black do the best with what they have in yeah. Envy. But I think actually Christopher Walken is the best character in that movie. Um, but I'm going to go with Heavyweights. Where does the shit go? I always remember that from Envy. Where does the shit go? Mm -hmm. uh, Malcolm, um, yeah, um, both of these um movies are, are just are pretty close together for me. I like, I mean, they they're both just okay. Like, Heavyweights is one of those ones that if I'd seen back when I was a kid and all that, um, maybe I'd have a bit more appreciation of it. But I I thought for the first time a couple of years ago when I was already um mid thirties, so um, 
Yeah, but um, just because there's a matchup I want to see happen down the line, Pez knows what I'm talking about. I'm going to vote heavyweights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris? Uh, so I have not seen MV at all. Mm. And based on the trailer, I really have no interest. But I really yeah. like heavyweights a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think I know we are going with that uh heavyweights matchup, I think. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, it could be similar characters. We'll we'll talk about it. But yeah, uh, yeah no, I, I'm easily going heavyweights here. Yeah. I, I not only grew up with it, but I, I think it legitimately holds up, uh, you know, because you do have Judd Apatel uh behind the actual screenplay, so it's a lot smarter than you would think it'd be. Um and yeah, like some legitimately really funny stuff like script wise. Uh really good kind of little get a couple of Adam Sandler's, you know, Alan Covert like pops up, you get Peter Berg in there in like a random role. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Peter Berg shows up as like the lunch guy, like just for like two scenes. <laughs> it's well, I was more surprised by Alan Covert. I didn't Alan, Covert did not Al- Alan, Alan Covert is the uh, he's the cameraman, yeah, running around the movie. Yeah, oh, wow. Uh, wow. yeah, and, and uh-huh. he, yeah, he has a couple little bits here. Yeah, um, no, he's yeah, a lot I mean, of actors. I don't say No, again, yeah, right. and, and uh, actual Paul Feig, like the director, <laughs> like you know, back when he was acting, he's 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 one of the counselors. Like he's got a sneaky little good cast here, um, and yeah, some some fun people that pop up throughout the whole thing. Jerry Stiller um uh yeah in the beginning and and yeah and just and i i legitimately think it's one of ben stiller's like best roles like he's manically psychotic in this movie but in the best way like he's so good and he just absolutely carries everything he's every scene he, he's in so easily heavyweights yeah yeah so yeah um all right got the holiday and the secret life of walter mitty uh okay. going down to jpo uh is up first on this one uh if he's still there, there you go. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot it was me next day. No, you're good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really I wanted to love the secret life of uh Walter Mitty here. I enjoyed the trailer, uh, but yeah, it's something about it never got me to the next level here. Holiday, I think it's just a really sweet, fun rom com with these uh two different sets here, including uh Jack Black making you believe you know, if you're chubby, you got a shout King Winslet. So let's go, Holiday. Holiday, yeah. the, ja- the uh, Christmas movie that Jack Black forgot he was in. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can go see that interview when they're like, "What's your favorite Christmas movie?" And he's like, da, da, da. "Yeah, I think he says like Elf." And they're like, "What about your own movie?" He's like, "What movie?" <laughs> and they're like, "The Holiday." He's like, "Oh yeah, the I'm Holiday Rules." Okay, okay, bye. Oh yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> the lovely Kate Blanchett. No wait. Yeah. Kate Winslet. Winslet. Winslet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he, him and Kate Blanchett are in that House with a Clock on the Wall movie, so maybe you just got him confused. That's probably so why so he, has been, he has been with both. Um, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, so the holiday was the last of the movies that I saw for this tournament. And I gave it an average score because him and Kate Winslet, anytime their scenes are on, like anytime you see their scenes, they're the best things in the movie. I cannot stand Cameron Diaz and Jude Law. And I think they're in <laughs> way too much. Yeah. Um, But with The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, I... I'm actually going to go with that movie because I in, I enjoy the adventure that you go on with Walter Mitty throughout. And I feel like it's a compelling character. So that's the movie I'm going with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm, what do you say? Somewhere out there, Stevens like, eliminate Walter Mitty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I know <laughs> he really loves it, Walter Mitty. Yeah. Um, yeah, th- yeah, this is really yeah. tough for me because both these movies are close together. Um, and yeah, uh, The Holiday is a great movie. I, I do um, try to watch it at least every Christmas. Sometimes I, I miss, forget about it and don't do it. But um, that's only because I've got these other ones I want to see for the first time. But yeah, I really enjoy the Holiday. I, I think it's fun. Um, this is actually one of the few I've, I've actually read the um, book it's based on is, um, because oh. it was one of the... Um, books that we had to teach, learn in English at school and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to slightly go Walter Mitty here. Yeah. Uh, Chris, what do you say? I hate The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I know oh. this comes up so <laughs> much on this show. Like, 
You guys adore this movie to heart to pieces. This movie's come up like twice the- on tournament fights. Ever. <laughs> yeah, like, everyone adores yeah. this movie. <laughs> Every <laughs> trust, trust me, Chris. I make these brackets. I have rarely pulled this poster. Okay, <laughs> I pulled this yeah, poster. Yeah, all right, twice. Well, maybe man, twice. I happen to be on one of the shows where everyone's obsessed. With. I think we pulled it for like the latter series I was a part of. That's it. Malcolm pulled yeah. it for that, and I pulled it for some other movie. The holidays come up more, probably. Something. I think the holidays. Yeah, but I love Christmas. the holiday. I think it's such a good movie. So much uh, awesome chemistry between all of them involved. A uh, great story. It was just, yeah, I love it all around. I think it's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Austin, what do you say? Yeah, the, the holiday's fine. Yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a decent little watch. But, yeah, I actually, I really like Walter Mitty. I, I think it's really solid. Yeah, again, Adventure, really well shot. Uh, Adam Scott plays a nice dick in it around the time he was playing, you know, dicks and, like, Step Brothers and whatnot. <laughs> you know, plays another one here. Uh, and he's fun. Uh, yeah, and Sean Penn showing up at the end is a good time. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's kind of underrated. I like it. So, I'll go Walter Mitty. Yeah, Jordan? Yeah, like, I think the, the holiday's kind of overrated uh, for me because, I, like, I, I remember, like, I saw it with some people that were like really like like way too into this. Some some girls that, that were just like really into it. There's a scene where like at the beginning and Kate Winslet's character is crying, and the girl that I'm sitting with with it is like bawling her eyes. I was so sad what she has to go through, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, get mm-hmm. over it. And like, uh, but um, but the Secret Life of Walter Mitty, yeah, I had a lot of fun. I had a really fun theater experience because I went with my. Aunt, my whole family will usually do that maybe like around the holidays or like something like that like or if we have a reason to all get together we'll we'll like find a day to go see a movie that's out and yeah uh it was great and the cinematography is great i love the like all the greenland scenes and like when he's like going around on helicopters and and like doing the i don't know if it's like longboarding or whatever he's doing but, but it looks really cool and i think it's fun so i'll go the secret life of walter Mitty. all right so um, on. Just quickly, I, um, and I'll, I'll be quick about this, but there was a world in which um, these people were attached to Walter Mitty. Jim Carrey was attached to Walter Mitty at one point, but um, then mm. Owen Wilson was attached to it as the lead at, um, um, mm. at one stage. And then Mike Myers was, and Sasha Baron Cohen all around that. <laughs> they would do it better. Oh, wow. Better. <laughs> <Secret John Stiller. laughs> Interesting, yeah. It's yeah. been in production since the 90s. Wow, <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. Okay. Uh, Mystery Men and oh, Happy no. Gilmore. Really? Uh, These two got to go up against each other? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Zach. Oh, of course you start with me. Thanks, Pez. Sorry. It's out of <laughs> Might be my two favorite movies in the, in this tournament. Uh, <laughs> like, almost, almost. They're close. No, I, <laughs> I, I really like Mystery Men, but if I remember correctly, uh, Happy Gilmore, I think, is in my top ten movies of all time. Um, so I'm going with Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm. Yeah, this is actually relatively easy for me. Like, um, and I do love Happy Gilmore. I do think it's good. But Ben Stiller is only a really small role in it. Um, he's one of the major roles in Mystery Men. And, um, I really do like Mystery Men a lot. I think it's great. So Mystery Men gets my vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Chris, what do you say? So uh, between the two movies, I really dig uh, Happy Gilmore more. So I'm gonna have to go with that direction on this one. Yeah, um, Austin. Yeah, no, this is this is tough only because like the movie I like more is Happy Gilmore, but like the meteor role, yeah, is 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 Ben Stiller in Mystery Men, and like it's a little bit more of an intriguing movie. We've seen Happy Gilmore a lot here recently, so uh, and yeah, Ben Stiller is very funny. He steals every scene he's in, obviously, uh, as that orderly, like he's great. Um, but I think I'll give it to Mystery Men here, just because it's kind of the meteor role for. Him. Yeah, so I love me some Happy Gilmore. That's like one of the best Adam Sandler movies out there, and uh, uh, I think Hal L is a great character. I used it in my my uh, name for tonight but yeah like mystery man is, is so good and it's and yeah it's uh, kind of like you said it's more meteor role that he's doing more and and he's a really fun uh, character like i just love like movies based around just just cool fun characters they're kind of like a like a band of misfits kind of just like trying to to fight crime and and like it, it's a lot of fun and it's from 
from a one-off kind of one-hit wonder a director too, Kinka Usher. I always like to to point that out. I don't know. I don't know if there'll ever be enough one-hit wonder directors to do a tournament, maybe. But uh, but this will definitely be one of them. And I'll go mystery man. So, uh, JPO. Yeah, dang. Because that, that's the only argument here is that we go for the the star role or you know the again slightly extended cameo here. Because I like mystery man though. I really do. It's one that I can go back to. It's uh, even maybe something before ahead of its time. I would love this. This is one I would love to see a sequel with. We're talking about Happy Gilmore sequel. I would love to see a Mystery Man follow up of them yeah. in their, their later years and everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Happy Gilmore to pieces here. He is very, he's at least very memorable. He's in it enough throughout, you know, how the or, orderly. In fact, uh, they reprise that role for Hubie Halloween. I, 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 I lead like a little schoolgirl. I was so happy to see, see some Hal again. Uh, if there's a sequel, I hope we get a little bit more of Hal. So I'll, I'll still go Happy Gilmore here. I love it too much. Okay, so we have a tie, and uh, Jordan, you got a pick, unfortunately. Oh <laughs> man, because <laughs> I do like the like character. It's like this is some high quality hand woven shit we're talking about here. <laughs> like it's good, but um, oh, glass of shit the hell up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good, but uh, I think I got to give it to Mystery Man. I'll I'll champion that one. So yeah. All right, yeah. Mystery so, Man, go through. As you heard the the news about Happy Gilmore. They might yeah, but it's not it's not it's not news though. That's been floating right. around for a while. Yeah, like, but I think it's like right. more official now, I guess. Or it, it's like he's it. been talking about doing a sequel to that for like ten years, dude. Like I, I I'll believe it when they start. Well, Christopher it. McDonald just just said on a radio show that yeah. that Adam Sandler showed him a version of the script. That's all it was. Well, yeah, I mean the script. That, well, I don't doubt that the script exists. Um, There's yeah. script, there are a lot of movies out there that don't go anywhere. <laughs> like, I, I, that doesn't mean anything to me. Like, like, I, 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 There's a chicken little two out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not, you know, I don't want it to be another coming to America, because that was just... No, that was bad. Yeah. Or a yeah. Zoolander 2. Yeah, you never know. That's what I mean. Like, how many sequels, you know, 25, They're 30 tough. years later? I'm... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but we'll go Bernie oh, and no. Saving Silverman. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, all right, uh, Malcolm. Um, I'm glad it's out of me because Saving Silverman, another movie you could um do for your alternate titles because it is known as Evil Woman in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's right, uh, Evil Woman. Uh, um, but yeah, um, this is an, an interesting one for me, like, um. I haven't I haven't seen Bernie in a while. I I do want to, I did want to um I didn't get around to revisiting it for this um, but um, yeah I I really enjoy Saving Silverman um and I I think it's really great and it's one of those ones that I think also it's just a lot of fun especially if the like the Neil Diamond connections and all that was he's one of my favorite singers um. And he's like, hey, we're coming to America. He's pointing at the actual America sign. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to vote for the same film. As I do think it's a very underrated um, movie. Yeah. Uh, Chris? Uh, I have never seen Bernie, but I really like Saving Silverman as well. I think it's a, a neat little film. I think we we're, I think it came up with another thing, and I watched it for the first time a while back, and I ended up really liking it a lot. I think yeah. it's a really good movie. Sounds good. Uh, Austin, what do you say? Jordan, this one's for you. That's <laughs> me and my brother Aaron. We always like do that to each other. Coming to yeah, yeah. <laughs> we always do that. <laughs> so I pulled that for you. Uh, but yeah, no, I, Bernie's an interesting movie, an interesting role. I don't know if I love it, but it's a weird movie. And, and I appreciate, you know, the difference in, in the role and whatnot. Um, I haven't seen Saving Silver in a while. It's been a while since I rewatched it. Um, I probably will fairly soon. Uh, but I remember having a good time. I, I remember liking early Ermy in it. Like, I remember him, him being Yeah. Uh, like, he's, 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 he's always great, you know, anytime he pops up, uh, yeah, outside of, like, Full Metal Jacket. So I'll, I'll give it to Saving Silver. Why not? Yeah. So I've never seen uh, Bernie before. It probably would have been like the one of the next ones I would have watched if I had more more time, but um, but yeah, I love love me some Saving Silverman. I think this movie just like like cracks me up. Like I discovered it in, in high school actually, and like in my film class that they uh, played it for us, and, and and yeah, like it's just so good. Yeah, the Arlie Army as the coach was like, "You boys got any TP?" And, and then 
Uh, he's like, he's like, no, sorry. He's like, it's okay, I'll figure it out. Next thing you know, you see him out in the lawn, like, like pulling out the mail to wipe his butt with it, and like all slyly. And then Jack Black's like, man, you've been pinching loaves on the lawn, man. I play croquet out there. Come on. <laughs> um, but there's just so many good stuff. I don't even love like Amanda Peet, but but like she's just like what actually works is like the the kidnapped girl, the kind of like evil woman, as you would say. Went they get her to like the. They're like Arby's Big Montana. It drips down go. the cleavage and all that. <laughs> um, Steve Zahn's fun. It as like the the uh, like the, like uh, the, like exterminator guy gets attacked by the the raccoon. Uh, Jason Biggs with the electrodes on the nipples getting shocked. Like all that stuff just w- works really really well for me. So I love this movie. So I'll go Saving Sora. Uh, GPU. I, I like this round. I'm so happy to to vote for both of these if this was the tournament played out differently because I like Bernie. Um, really different kind of fun role for uh, Jack Black here. Um, and it's uh, the re-team of uh, School of Rock, too, him and Richard Licklater again. Um, oh, so yeah. it's a really interesting watch. It's worth checking out. Uh, Saving Silver Window, I, might, I think I'm going to give that my vote, though. It might be a nostalgia pick. It's another one I've been watching on and off now for, you know, 20 years, give or take. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. Yeah, they're the perfect best, you know, two best friends who all what's best for their boy Jason Biggs, including uh, kidnapping a girl. And yeah, early Irmy is super funny, and this has helped put early Irmy on the map for me personally. And uh, yeah, I gotta go saving slow from here. And so many quotes out of left field that I'll use. Me and my buddy Doug that passed away. Whenever we're we're in a recliner and we can't get it up, like it was the lug nut fixed it because it's like like uh, Jack Black's line when he's stuck in the recliner. <laughs> but uh, Zach, what do you say? Okay, so. Um, Bernie was actually going to be the last movie I would have seen for this tournament, I think well, yesterday, and I just never got around to it. Um, and I've heard of Saving Silverman. Uh, I'm gonna go for Bernie just because it was going to be a movie I was gonna watch like sooner, so I'm sure, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you would have chose it first, so yeah, you know it. Uh, yeah. all right. The Saving Silverman moves on, all right. So, once again, Jordan, for you since it moved on. Yeah, all right. I got the Myers Wood stories. I uh, got some Sam Man here for you, JPO. And uh, the big year uh, with uh, Steve Martin and another Owen Wilson uh, movie popping up here. Uh, so, Chris, uh, you're muted, buddy. So, I've never seen uh, the Merowitz stories at all, but. Uh, but I really like the big year. I think that's a great story. Uh, and I like that bird, 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 the word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yes. Austin. I haven't seen either one of these. <laughs> i got to be honest. So uh, I didn't see the big year. Uh, I haven't seen the Myra stories yet. But uh, I'd be more interested to watch the Myra stories just because, yeah, I, I appreciate when uh, Sandler, you know, uh, branches out and does these kind of uh, non comedies and whatnot. And uh, stresses his action chops. I can always appreciate that. So I'll go Myra Woods. Yeah, um, so I actually watched the Meyerwood stories for this because when I first originally like heard about this movie, the trailers make it look really boring. Like I don't know, like I'm just like, like that looks like a bore pass, but but like you you see it and it's actually really good. And it took me a little bit, not too long, fifteen minutes or so, to really get into it. But then after that, it just really gets good and it, and it takes off. And and like Dustin Hoffman's great in it. Um, and then uh, when you finally get scenes with Adam Sandler and Ben Stiller together, I think that it that it really works. Like, like, and those are two of my favorite comedic actors. You put them, those two, in in a movie together, and it and it just really works for me. I think, and and it has a lot of heart too. There, there's a scene that with with Ben Stiller. I won't spoil it, but it like nearly made me cry. I was just like, man, this is like like really good stuff, and. It just works, and and the big year kind of holds a little bit of a special place for me because it's a movie that like randomly me and my sister went to go see, just me and her, and like we don't really do a whole lot, just me and my sister because out of five kids, I'm the oldest and she's the youngest, and so we we don't get a lot of chances to just go do something just me and her, and so we went and saw the big year just because that's what was out, and we, and we wanted to do something together, and and that was fun, and I think that that like. Who would have thought the movie about bird watching would be like that worthwhile? Because that sounds boring too. But I mean, 
the uh, three of them with Owen Wilson and Jack Black and then Steve Martin in there. It's fun, but maybe it's just a recency uh, uh, a bias. But I thought the Mary Witch stories was actually really good, so I'll go with that. But uh, JPO. Yeah, I wanted to love the big year because I mean, look at look at the trio of actors we have for this year. I mean, I'm a huge mm-hmm. Steve Martin fan as well. Um, but yeah, I thought the movie was just fine. Unfortunately, again, it's one of those movies that. You know, I said before, not in the same vein as Greenberg, but again, I remember just kind of being like, that was fine. Like, don't, I didn't laugh out loud that much, and I also necessarily even see kind of where you could laugh out loud all that much. It was kind of a fine movie. I think that's why it's it kind of went under the radar despite having these three heavyweights in it. Because, um, again, it's good, but it's not great. I really like Marwood's stories, though. I think this is the opposite of that. I think there's so much to do with the script here. I think Hoffman's great. Stiller's great. Sandler's really good. Uh, I think everyone puts in really good performance here in a, in a tight movie, so I'm going to go with Myra stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Zach, what do you say? So both of these movies are on a list for me to see, um, but the big year is higher on the list for me, so I'm going to go with the big year. Yeah. Um, Malcolm, what do you say here? Um, yeah, this is tough as once again two movies are really close together for me um but yeah i mean i do really like the moment stories i think it's a really good movie and and it's probably high up for, um for noah bombay for me um but big years I, I really enjoyed that the, it was one of those movies that i'd never heard of before i, I can't remember i was what i watched it for some for some reason um and it's just one that i really um enjoy and definitely going to go back to watch again um so yeah big big good yeah so another, another tie and jpo back down to you so you can save the same man here if you like <laughs> no i've yeah. definitely got to save the same that's a better move than the two in my opinion so my what's for sure okay yeah there we go all right and there we go. go we're going to the speed round it is time and yeah, yeah. like i said let's let's look at ben stiller's faces on these other side I, i'm yeah. curious about <laughs> that now <laughs> as we uh scroll back over and uh We're probably slow it may be yeah we'll, we'll check it out uh oh yeah well, that one he's just kind of looking over yeah what are you doing there <laughs> went out a rider like he has a face. Yeah. yeah uh no, tropic thunder he's at least doing something there so there you go yeah. Yeah, he's doing something. Song. All right. Uh, so anyway, speed round. You guys know how it works. Ten seconds or less. Give me those votes, and uh, we'll start with zero effect and Tropic Thunder. I'm up first. Tropic Thunder, Jordan. Yeah, I'll go Tropic Thunder. All right, JPO. Tropic Thunder. All right. Uh, Zach. Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. I don't like Tropic Thunder. I'll go for the movie I'm not seeing. Zero effect. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, first. Uh, Tropic Thunder. All right, yeah. Tropic Thunder is in there. Uh, no Ben Stiller on those, so be kind, rewind. <laughs> and uh, Shallow Hal, uh, both Jack Black here. Uh, Jordan? Uh, I'll go be kind, rewind. Okay. Uh, JPO. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, Shallow Hal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, I don't know how he does the little thing. Like, uh, and, shallow uh, Hal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, Knock him. Uh, shallow hell. All right. Yeah. Chris? Uh, shallow hell. Yeah. No, you know what? I'll go shallow hell. Why not? <laughs> so, shallow sure. hell. All right. Uh, got uh, Kung Fu Panda and Keeping the Faith. Hey, he's smiling there. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Not, nice. Uh, you younger, younger times. Uh, <laughs> Kung Fu Panda Keeping the Faith. Uh, not like completely stressed out or whatever. He That's right. For yeah. life, yeah. just yeah. punch him in the face. <laughs> That's right. Mm. I'll do Kung, Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda, Zach. Kung Fu Panda. All right. Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm. I'm going to go for Dropkick Panda. Ch- yeah. <laughs> chop, chop Kick Panda. Chop Kick Panda. Get the knockoff right. Yeah. Get the <laughs> knockoff right there, Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, pull up that, I'll pull up that poster at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Chris? Chris. Uh, keep the faith. Okay. I'll go yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Jordan? <laughs> and I'll go Skadoosh for Kung Fu Panda. All right, Kung Fu Panda moving on. I uh, got Don't Worry and Zoolander. Hey, he's at least making the the face and the steel face in Zoolander. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah, he does right. some different faces in Zoolander. <laughs> yeah, right. He poses. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, going to Zach. Zoolander. Okay. Uh, Malcolm? Don't worry, he won't get the foul. But... Okay. Uh, Chris? Uh, Zoolander. I'll go Don't Worry. Jordan? 
I gotta go with the male model's life. It's a precious, precious commodity, Zoolander. <laughs> All right, JPO. Oh God, um, <laughs> Zoolander. Okay, Zoolander. Moving on, and go down to Orange County, and uh, I can't. It's hard to tell with that Meet the Fockers one because it's right there. I think he's just staring forward, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Orange County, Meet the Fockers, uh, Malcolm. Yeah, I think he has the same um, expression yeah, on one of the parents' posters. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go meet the fuckers. Uh, yeah, meet the fuckers. Okay. Uh, Chris? Uh, meet the fuckers. Uh, I'll go meet the fuckers. See, that's the thing. 32%. I'll go Orange County. <laughs> that's like a Harold Ramis thing when he's high. He doesn't finish sentences. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, Orange County. Uh, uh, JPO? Uh, let's see here. I was totally awake. You can't prove me wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's go with uh, Orange County. Rewind the footage. Rewind, yeah. Yeah, rewind the footage. Right. I'm pretty sure you're story. <laughs> this all is right. recorded, isn't shit? Yes, yeah, all right. Damn. It's <laughs> all right, Zach. Just, just listen for your name. Uh, we got County. you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we have a tie to Zach. Are you stick with Orange, Orange County. County. Okay, yes. Orange County so. makes the comeback. All right. All right. Uh, exactly. go Orange County. Uh, Gulliver and Tenacious D. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, Chris. Uh, Tenacious D, I guess. Two barn burners here. Uh, yeah, I don't care for either one, but I guess Tenacious D, because that's his band, so sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't they do like the F word song, like the fucker slowly or, or yes. something like that? In, in Tenacious D. Yeah, I'll. I'll go with, with Tenacious D. I mean, I don't like the other one. Uh, JPO? Yeah, uh, this is a round of how the other one we should have won last round. But for this <laughs> round, I'll go with Tenacious D. Okay. And he clearly wasn't snoring in the. Uh, just know. I, I was, no, this time I wasn't. Like, I just. <laughs> yeah. Nice he's, snoring, sir. He's, he's relaxing. Relax. Yeah. yeah. He's resting his eyes right. permanently. Yeah. He's, he's, he's voting. It's fine. <laughs> Zach? These are long episodes. No. I get it. <laughs> We're almost done. It's too hard. hard no, it's just hard. Malcolm? Um. Pick the pick this is uh pick of this is great. Pick of this thing gets my vote. Okay. Yeah. All right. Pick this is uh tougher matchup here got there's something about Mary and School of Rock. Uh so me, I'll go School of Rock. Uh Jordan. Yeah. I'll go School of Rock, but yeah, I wish Matt Dillon would do more comedies. I like him in comedy, but I'll go School yeah. of Rock. Uh JPO. School of Rock. I love School of Rock. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it should be a heavy contender to win this thing, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, at least one of the top ones. Uh Zach. <laughs> I think there's something about Mary is my uh, is very overrated. So School of Rock, yeah. kind of agree. Uh, Malcolm, yeah. <laughs> once again, it's another Ben Stiller post, which is just right in the picture. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, School yeah. of Rock. I, I don't like the time of Batman as much as other people, but School of yeah. Rock. Yeah, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, uh, School of Rock. All right, School of Rock. If you want to be the teacher's pet. All Baby, right. you just better forget. Night in the Museum, he's definitely doing the staring ahead face. It's just oh, like, yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah. it's a Photoshop poster, yeah. too. Uh, but Night in the Museum, uh, Secret of the Tomb, and Goosebumps, uh, Jordan. Oh, that's Night in the Museum, easy for me. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, JPO. JPO, which Night in the Museum? I'm sorry, the third one, and Goosebumps. Uh, Goosebumps. Yeah, I'll go to the third one here. I actually really like how they end with Robin Williams. Like, I don't. It's almost like they knew in a way, like kind of fits. No, so yeah, he has kind yeah. of a fitting ending monologue. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> where he kind of he kind of yeah. says goodbye to everybody. Yeah, it's very strange yeah. <laughs> when you watch. He it. was yeah. uh, I forget what he called those guys that predict the future, but he but he knew yeah. it was coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Zach, uh, secret of the tomb. Okay. Yeah, uh, Malcolm. Uh, goosebumps. Goosebumps. Yep. Chris. Oh, Chris. I I really like goosebumps, but yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, farewell he did and everything. It was a powerful mm -hmm. uh, final farewell movie to him. Uh, so I'm going to yeah. go with uh, Night at the Museum. Secret of the Tomb. Uh -huh. I'll also go Secret yeah. of the Tomb. So there yeah. we go. All right. So yeah, the tomb jump to the other side here and see what else makes the Sweet 16 here as we're getting there. House of the Clock and its Walls and The Watch and him doing just a straight ahead face. All right. So yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we talked about the side already, but uh, JPO. Uh, what you got? Uh, yeah, got the old Clock and its Walls. Clock and the Walls. All right, Zach. Uh, the one I've seen, The Watch. Okay. 
Um, welcome. The better movie, the house with the clock in its walls. Yes. Uh, uh, Chris? Uh, I haven't seen the house with the clock in the wall, but it looks really awesome, so I'm going to go with that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, awesome. Eli Ross, best movie, question mark. House with the clock in its walls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving is the best. Uh, <laughs> uh, that movie's fine. Relax. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, serviceable. It's a serviceable. Yeah. Yes, yeah, serviceable it's is board. fine. I think people were a little okay being uh, we'll silly, see, but all right. Yeah. We'll see what Borderlands do. I don't know. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. I'm gonna predict. Guess what? Wait for it. Wait for it. Serviceable. Yes. Yeah. Serviceable. Uh, <laughs> given the fact Bob that it's been sitting four. on it's been sitting on a shelf for two years, serviceable. <laughs> that's, that's, that also scares me a little bit. They've yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I'll throw my book to the serviceable movie, The Watch. <laughs> uh, all right, it's gonna be House of Clock in the Walls, and then Super Mario Brothers and Mars Attacks. Uh, Zach, yeah, Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers. Okay, Malcolm. Yeah, I I like Mars Attacks, but Super Mario Brothers is probably more meaty for Jet Black, so Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, uh, Chris. This is really hard, actually, but. Yo, I'm gonna go uh, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Uh, awesome. uh, Mars Attacks. Yeah, that, that, this one's tough. But I'll go with Here We Go Mario. Super Mario. Uh, JPO. Uh, I had to go back. That's Mars Attacks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, close enough. But uh, Super Mario is gonna move on. Uh, welcome to the jungle and flirting with disaster. Uh, Malcolm. Welcome to the jungle. Okay, uh, Chris. Uh, welcome to the jungle. Uh, yeah, I'll go Jumanji as well. Jordan? Yeah, let's go Jumanji. JPO? Yeah, yeah, sh- yeah I'll go Jumanji. Yeah. All right. And Zach? Uh, welcome to the jungle. Okay, a clean sweep yeah. for Jumanji. Going right. down to Long Came Polly and Night at the Museum. Uh, Chris? Uh, Night at the Museum. Yeah, I'll also go awesome. Night at the Museum. Jordan? Yeah, I'll go Night at the Museum. Okay. Uh, JPO? No, uh, sorry. Hang on. <laughs> uh, his, his wife chews on him with Hank Azari, who literally become a cast member of Night Museum. Night Museum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach? Night at the Museum. Okay. Uh, oh. And Malcolm? Night at the Museum. All right, clean sweep for Night at the Museum. Uh, Dodgeball and Madagascar 2. Uh, me, I'll go Dodgeball. Uh, yeah. Jordan. I'll go with white, W H I T E, dodgeball. JPO. Uh, yeah, I'll go dodgeball. Dodgeball. Uh, uh, Zach. D- dodgeball. All right. Malcolm. Dodgeball. And Chris. I'll give some love to uh, Madagascar, too. All right. I hope we get uh, that dodgeball sequel. We'll see. Uh, uh yeah we'll see uh meet the parents and heavyweights uh jordan uh ooh, five this one's tough oh man uh you know what i'm gonna throw some love to meet the parents because it's the only one i like of the series so yeah um jpo i'll go with the parents here yeah uh zach meet the parents yeah uh, Malcolm. Yeah, as much as I want that match up, I can't um, do it. In <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I kind of want to see the the <laughs> fitness matchup. <laughs> Perkis versus uh, Dwight. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get, it, I get it. I get it. Yeah, it's a tough matchup here, uh, Chris. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, heavyweights. All right. I was gonna say just so it doesn't get shut out, I would have voted heavyweights, but that's fine. <laughs> but me, the yeah. best is good. So there you go. We went heavyweights versus Happy Gilmore. Those two characters are pretty close, you know. So uh, yeah. Walter Mitty and Mystery Men. Uh, JPO, back down to you. Oh, <laughs> I get stuff I didn't vote for, but I like both of these. So uh, <laughs> Mystery Men, I'll go for. Mystery yeah. Men. All right, Zach. Uh, this is a tough matchup. Uh, Mystery Men, because I feel like it's more unique. Okay. Yeah, uh, Malcolm. Yeah, this is very tough, but sorry, Stephen, mystery men. <laughs> yep. Uh, Chris? Walter Mitty, only because I'm not that high on mystery men. Okay. 
I thought you weren't that high on Walter Mitty last time. I hate Walter <laughs> Mitty, but I hate, I hate the other one more. Really? Oh. <laughs> yes. Hot take. Uh, uh, I'll go Walter Mitty by a little bit. Jordan? I'll go the movie I saw while I got a root canal. Mystery Man. Mm. <laughs> I, watched I, watched Married with Ch- I watched Married with Children while I was getting cat- cat- uh, cavities filled one time. Oh, yeah? Fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, on, on the gas. <laughs> uh, saving That'd be hard man. because what if you laugh and then they're like, whoops, and they just... Uh, just automatically like run <laughs> no. to your gums. Or no, you're just more like kind of zonked. Yeah, you're fine, but you know it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saving Silverman and Myrwood stories. Uh, Zach. Uh, Saving Silverman. Okay. Uh, Malcolm. This is tough. But just slightly Myrwood stories. Okay. Yeah. Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, let's go Saving Silverman. Okay. Austin. There is an Adam Sandler connection to Saving Silverman because it's directed by Dennis Dugan, who did a lot of Adam Sandler movies. So, but oh, yeah? Saving oh. Silverman. <laughs> yeah. That makes uh-huh. sense. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Jordan? Uh, yeah, Saving Silverman. All right. JPO? Myerwood Stories. Okay. Close one, two, four, two, but uh, Saving Silverman going to pull it out here. All right, uh, going down to so the next ones will be the Elite Eight. Uh, I did post some polls over the last week, so I'm, I'm nice. catching up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm getting there. Sure. Uh, but I'll write these down for a uh, potential poll here, and we'll see which guy has the most movies or if they have some crossovers. We'll see. Uh, we'll start with Tropic Thunder and Shallow Hell for the Elite Eight. Uh, Malcolm will be up first. Shallow Hell. Shallow Hell. Chris. Uh, shallow Hell. Uh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah, there's something about what's that guy like Tony Robbins that kind of freaks me out. So I'll go with with Tropic Thunder. <laughs> okay, uh, JPO. Uh, Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Uh, Zach. Yeah. Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder into the Elite Eight. All right, so we have one for both of them. <laughs> All right, so far, uh, both guys. All right, going down to uh, Kung Fu Panda and Zoolander. Uh, Chris. Uh, Zoolander. Uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda. Let's go with some orange mocha frappuccinos. Zoolander. Uh, JPO. Super fucking tough for me. Zoolander. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Zach. Kung Fu Panda. Okay. Yeah. And Malcolm. Let's go for a good bowl of noodles, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> okay. Some, uh, some dumplings. Yeah, uh, we have a tie, and it's up to Malcolm. Oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye, Zoolander. Oh. Yay, all right. <laughs> nice. All right, goodbye, Zoolander. All right, well, it's been fun having you, Malcolm. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, good. Uh, Malcolm, I'll is. have you back anytime for putting Kung Fu Panda over <laughs> Zoolander. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the much better film. Uh, anyways, uh, Orange County yeah. and Tenacious D. The two top dogs fight it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Me first, I'll take uh, Orange County. Uh, Jordan? Yeah, I'll, I'll usually go with with Orange County. Yeah. Uh, by the way, both of these movies are Jack Black movies with a Ben Stiller cameo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> both, of, both, both of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, JPO? Marcus Skinner, he wants to and, be a writer. Uh, well, not a cameo, but Colin Hanks is also, I believe, in HD, isn't he? So <laughs> also yeah. Colin Hanks. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Orange County. Orange County. Uh, Zach? Uh, Orange County. Okay, Malcolm. It's a P. Oh, Dixon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chris. Uh, Orange County. Okay, Orange County into the A. You just watched the scene where, where they order cheesy bread. It's a deleted scene, but where like Jack Black hides a kite and he's just like, mmm, cheesy bread with cheesy, gooey, mama, duty. He's just like high out of his. His mind. It's fun. Uh, Secret <laughs> yeah. of the Tomb and School of Rock, Jordan. Ooh, School of Rock. All right. GPO. GPO. Uh... <laughs> Secret of the Tomb. I was on my phone. I was awake. I was on my phone. No, no, no I, was I, was just rec- I was just recapping so you didn't have to squint. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Uh, Zach. Uh, 
Let's go over a squint. Uh, what movies uh, are they? Malcolm? Yeah, that museum poster is hard as shit to tell what it is. Well, it's, yeah. just, it's a sloppy ass poster because it's like one of those yeah. Photoshop where we have 30 yeah, characters all, on the poster. All 30 people I, 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 hate, oh I hate that. I hate, I hate that. Still shit. rocking, I can tell, but sometimes I'm Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Uh, Malcolm? Uh, School of Rock. Uh, Chris? Uh, School of Rock. And I'll make it a clean sweep for the Elite Eight. So yeah. there you go. All right, School of Rock. So, so far we have Tropic Thunder, Kung Fu Panda, Orange County, School of Rock. It's technically tied if you count the Ben Stiller cameo in Orange County. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I mean, realistically, Jack Black kind of... Technically? Slight, slight, yeah. slight lead here a little bit as far as the more prominent roles. But yeah. technically, technically tied. Yeah. Uh, so we got the House of Clock on the Walls and Super Mario Brothers. Uh, JPO. Oh, well, we're on the right side here. Uh, clock. Yeah. That's with the clock. Clock. All right. Uh, Zach. Super Mario Brothers. Okay. Malcolm. That's with the clock in it, goes. All right. Chris. Chris. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Mario Brothers. Okay. Uh, I'll go with Clock on the Walls. Jordan. Well, you talk about which one Jack Buck kind of stole the show on. It's got to be Super Mario Brothers. So I'll go with that. All right. So we have a tie, and we scoot it up to Chris. Uh, Mario Brothers, baby. Let's put that yeah, in Super Mario, Let's all right. Do it. Super Mario into the eight. All right. Going down to Jumanji. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Night at the Museum. Uh, Zach. So got a kind of a, almost like a family movie matchup here. Yeah. yeah an- uh, another tough one that I start with. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I will go with Night at the Museum. Okay. Welcome. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Okay, Chris. Yeah, Chris. This is really tough. Uh, I gotta go though. Uh, Night at the Museum. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Night at the Museum actually. Jordan. Well, I mean, again, you talk about the one that that uh, Jack Black stole the show on playing that teenage girl. So I'll go uh, Jumanji. Yeah. Uh, and JPO. Uh, JPO. Jumanji. Okay, we have a tie to me this time, and I'm going to give it to Ben Stiller on this one. Let's get him in there. Mm. Uh, museum. All right. All right. All right. All right museum. This is the best one of the series. Yeah. Uh, all right. Going down to uh, Dodgeball and Meet the Parents. Oh, Here's a no. <laughs> all right. So cool. uh, ben, ben Stiller versus Ben Stiller here. Uh, Malcolm. Um, just because I don't. I think it's won a tournament. I'm gonna go meet the parents. Yeah, uh, Chris. I uh, I'm gonna have to go with uh, dodgeball. Yeah, yeah. This is tough. Uh, dodgeball. Yeah, yeah. I just love that that crew they have for dodgeball. They got a pirate. They got Justin Long being like a neurotic weirdo. They got a, a it's a a cool cast of characters, so yeah, dodgeball. Huh. Uh, JPO. Go dodgeball. All yeah. right. Uh, Zach. Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Okay, right. to answer your question, Malcolm, Meet the Parents is a former tournament winner. Uh, it won our uh, awkward family oh, that's things right. uh, tournament. Yeah, because that oh, yeah. epitomizes the awkward family things. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so okay. it actually uh, it has won a tournament. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, Mystery Men and Saving Silverman. Uh, Chris. Which men um, are going to win? Yeah, which, which man? They're men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Saving Silverman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome. uh, Saving Silverman. Uh, this one's tough. Like I have a lot of love for both these, but I think I got to go saving Silverman by a hair. Okay, uh, JPO. <laughs> saving Silverman and Mystery Man. Yeah. Ah, I like it, these both. Uh, mm-hmm. Mystery Man. Mystery Man. All right, Zach. With the uh, Mystery Man. Mystery Man and Malcolm. I wish Breaker Fights had a feature where you could just click on a post and make it zoom out a little bit. Um, I know. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to go Mystery Man. Okay, we so can do the, the 1v1 one one, like thing where you can put them on screen, but it makes you go down one side first. And then the yeah, all side. the way to the end, and then you have to all go the way to the, the championship. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
Uh, Jordan, you got to vote again between these two you both like. Oh, no. You have the tie. tie. (laughs) Yeah, so you got to vote again. (laughs) Jeez. Yeah, like I – I just have more memories and things with Saving Silverman, so yeah. All know. right, Saving Silverman, kind of a dark horse in this tournament. I didn't expect to yeah. get this far, but right. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Did it, did it make like the top twelve two thousands comedies? Yeah, yeah it so it's, it's got um, its got its low. I, yeah, I guess it's got yeah. its followers. I mean, fair enough. All right. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Uh, all right. So there we go. Uh, all right. So tallying up the elite eight just before we get to the winner here. Uh, so it looks like. If we go by just prominent roles, not just like cameos, uh, let's see. Ben still has one, two, three. Uh, yeah, I think it's six to two. It's three. It's three to five, but technically, Tropic Thunder has both. You know, Orange yeah. County kind of has both with a cameo. Uh, yeah. But you know, Jack Black is a prominent role in Tropic Thunder, Kung Fu Panda, Orange County, School of Rock. Super Mario and Saving Silverman. So he's got it's kind of six to two. But if you you split, but you split the difference between Tropic Thunder, which I would mainly give to Ben Stiller because he also directed it. So I would say more five to three if I had to. Yeah, uh, but it's close. But basically, it's fairly split though when you look at it, including cameos. Uh, so we'll yeah. see what makes it here and uh, what wins this whole thing. Which guy, or maybe they both win. We'll see. Uh, Kung Fu Panda, Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Myself, I'll take Kung Fu Panda. Jordan, uh, I'll go Tropic Thunder. All right, uh, JPO. Uh, yeah, JPO. Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. All right, uh, Zach. Tropic Thunder. Okay, Malcolm. Tropic Panda. Tropic Panda. All right, uh, and Chris. Uh, Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. All right, into the final four. I actually Should thought Ma- Malcolm said Tropic Panda, so I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's about, yeah, Chop Kick Panda. I'll pull, I'll pull that up during the plugs. It's a goofy, <laughs> like, yeah, one of those knockoff movies. Uh, Orange County and School of Rock, uh, Jordan. Oh, frick. This one's tough. I don't know. I'll probably go Orange County. I just love the line when when he's with that girl in the burning building, and he's like, do you want me to call the cops? He's like, do you want me to get naked and start the revolution? And then he drops his pants. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but, uh, JPO. Nah, let's rock, let's rock today. It's cool, rock. Yeah. <laughs> You're fat and you have body odor. <laughs> uh, is that? School of Rock. Uh, Malcolm. I don't need to have to see both of these. School of Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris. Let's see. I, I was School of Rock. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Austin. You're tacky and I hate you. School of Rock. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. All right. You see me after class. <laughs> all right. Uh, Super Mario on the other side and Night at the Museum. JPO. The groupies, they're sluts. They sleep in the bank. I'll go to Night at the Museum. <laughs> uh, Night at the Museum. Uh, yeah. Zach? Night at the Museum. Okay. Uh, Malcolm? Night at the Museum. Chris. Um, Chris. This is really tough, but I got to go uh, Night at the Museum. Uh, yeah, I really like Night at the Museum. And I would have gone Super Mario. All right, but not in the museum, yeah. end of the four. Okay, uh, Dodgeball and Saving Silverman. Uh, Zach? Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Malcolm? Saving Silverman. Okay, Chris? Yeah. Uh, Saving Silverman. Uh, the one I've seen more, Dodgeball. Wow, Patches of Hula Hand. I'll go with <laughs> Dodgeball. Uh, JPO? Saving Silverman. Oh. Okay. Uh, we have a tie to <laughs> back down to JPO. <laughs> yes, the powers is with me to put in Saving Silverman. Oh, all right. All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I might have to this week revisit Saving Silverman because it's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> we'll see. All we right. Should, so. Yeah. All right, so we've got uh, kind of two, oh, wow. three, kind of three blacks and two sort of Ben Stillers against Tropic Thunders both, so uh yeah they, they kind of yeah. split but we'll see what happens here uh so on the left malcolm we'll start with you for tropic thunder and school of rock school of rock all right uh chris uh school of rock yeah school they play an acdc song over the credits school of rock yeah read between the lines read between the lines let's go uh school of rock oh that's what that's from okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
on JPO. I say that all the time. It's a great PG way to flip someone off. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's bigger those credits too. I so use it at work. Movies, you yeah. don't want to leave the credits because you just fucking love hanging out with these people. So it's uh-huh. rock. Yeah. yeah. And I think that whole credit scene, by the way, was pretty improvised. Like, they were doing the song, but all the stuff in between, like, was pretty improvised. Oh, 100%. Like, I would have yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zach? Uh, School of Rock. All right. It's a clean sweep for the School of Rock for Black. All right. So he's got one. Night of the Museum is saving Silverman on the other side. Uh, Chris? Uh, Night of the Museum. Uh, yeah, I'll go the one with Stephen Moore, Night of the Museum. I just don't get how Night of the Museum has two sequels. And neither School of Rock or Saving Superman has a sequel. Come on. <laughs> so uh, I'm going. It's also there was no sequel for Saving Superman. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm going with Saving Superman. Okay. Uh, JPO. Yeah, I think just because they are better films, but I think Night Museum was built more for like following yeah. the School of Rock, especially yeah. Saving Silverman. Saving Silverman again. You know. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> Saving trouble. another guy. Um, Whoever the yeah. next guy is. <laughs> Uh, uh I, I, let's see. I want even up. I want even up for boys. I'll say night at the museum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zach. Night at the museum. Okay. And Malcolm. Um, saving Silverman. All right, four to two, but a surprising finalist, Night at the Museum. So, wow. all right, we have a so we have a uh, and they don't do cameos in either. So we have a true Jack Black versus Ben Stiller finals here. With yeah. School of Rock and Night at the Museum in the finals. Uh, so let's see what wins this whole thing. Uh, we start with myself, and I'm going to go School of Rock. I, I think this Jack Black's best movie, so I'm going with that. Jordan? Yeah, it's one of the best dates I've ever had. We were like having a blast with this movie. So School of Rock, and as a song about math, not, like, not any other movie has that. Mm-hmm. Uh, JPO? Yeah, I mean, School of Rock's in my top five of comedies for the decade, for Jack Black, for etc. So, School of Rock. Yeah. Uh, Zach? Uh, School of Rock. Okay. Yep. Uh, Malcolm? Not at the museum. Okay. Uh, but you're Ned Schneebly. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris? Chris. Uh, School of Rock. All right, and the man who takes the tournament, Jack Black, will take it with School of Rock, which finally becomes a tournament winner tonight for the first time. I think there's something about like this, like Jack Black said, like this is his favorite movie. I think it's his favorite movie he's ever done. Yeah, he's always said it's been his favorite movie he's ever done. Yeah, it just because he loves rock rock music. So I mean, yeah, he's a guy who loves rock. It's a rock musician. It's fucking repeatable it's good for most ages like yeah you know, easy to watch like, yeah it's great no. yeah, i mean how many like like schools out there that are like teaching kids guitar lessons call their school school of rock i had one in, in when i lived in eagle idaho they have one uh-huh yeah. Well, here's yeah. the thing, Malcolm. If School of Rock hadn't won this, I would have been pushing it to win one of the 2003 Ladder Series tournaments that are coming up because it's 2003. But hey, yeah. it could win another tournament very soon. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. It's a heavy hitter there, so we'll see. Hey, it's uh, not at the museum if it won. No, it has not. That's yeah. about the closest it's ever come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it even did that well in the 06 in the 06 Ladder Series. I don't think it did that well. Uh, I think it been top. It had been up against some strong. Yeah, it sure I did. So. Make the finals tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I, 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 I would have said it would have been like School of Rock versus like Dodgeball or something, you know, like something like, like that. Happy Gilmore, I don't know. Uh, just like color. I, I always said Dodgeball, just because. Yeah, I, I think it. You know, it's a pretty beloved movie. So yeah, uh, but yeah, congrats to uh, School of Rock on taking it and uh, Jack Black coming out on top. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, but that was fun. Yeah, uh, uh, always a good time, especially. Uh, for me, when I'm talking comedy, it's my favorite genre, so I love it. Uh, and yeah, we'll just go d- all right and do some plugs, and then, then that'll do it for us. So uh, we'll go to JPO first. Uh, what do you have going on? Hey, guys, that's me. Uh, you yeah. can, when I'm not popping up in this mm-hmm. channel, including Thursdays with the Lonely Marks, that's me, Pez, Richie, and the Barber talking some wrestling, mm-hmm. including this Thursday. You can find me over at the Pierceco. We do some movie trivia, some top tens, some uh, occasional drafts, other weird wackiness. You can find me over at Pierce Wrestling, where we do exclusive interviews and exclusive matches. And uh, you can find me sometimes over at Why We Love Horror. You can maybe find me at Movie Battleground. You can maybe find me over at uh, your sister's house, because uh, I love your sisters. 
Like, <laughs> stay away from my sister. <laughs> I can't write this You're story. good. I, I actually uh, wouldn't mind it, but she's married. Uh, uh, Zach, where can we find you? <laughs> Uh, you can find me in different places, Lights Out and Multiplex, but also uh, on Letterboxd and YouTube at Movie Fan Z. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. I'm the Lights Out Divisional Champion. I'll be fighting Dim very soon, let's say. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, yeah. I lost, like, second round, and I actually made it a round in that one, though, <laughs> uh, which I'm surprised. But, uh, Malcolm, um, where, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on TV Productions. I host um, Rankum every Sunday night. Um, I know Austin's not happy about this, but next week's topic is going to be top job comedy TV shows. Come on, guys. How could you not oh, give yeah. me Godzilla for my birthday? Damn all of you yeah. who voted for anything <laughs> other than Godzilla. You could have given me a present, oh. all of you, so you're all dead to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I will say I, um, I may make, make it up to him for the poll for this week because um, that means he's, guaranteed, he's definitely going to be on next week's episode because i know he, he likes the topics going to be um, oh okay. well, oh yeah because okay i know what's coming up <laughs> i was gonna say for for the one after that you might as well just have all the lonely marks on that episode so <laughs> just, say, just, <laughs> just get a wrestling overload so yeah that's fine <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, well, um, I, well, I will say, I don't know. Like, you might have to change the time for that too, because we're gonna be watching WrestleMania on both nights, Malcolm. So, I don't know. I that. accounted for that. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> uh, I'll say, yeah, we're gonna be on a stream watching it together. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know so about being be on the stream, but I'm gonna be watching WrestleMania myself. So, well, that's what <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I, we're we're all probably gonna be on a stream watching it together. So, yeah. Uh, oh, that's that's nice. Us. Yeah. But you can also find me on. Um, Full Metal is a host trivia. Um, we have, uh, the final of the tournament will be dropping this week. It will be, be starting for the regular season next week. We've got some banger matches coming up. We've got um, Richie versus Dan Skip Allen coming up next week, as well as um, Amru Moses taking on Brennan Ma. Um, so it should be a fun, um, fun and yeah. Yeah, cool. Look forward to that. And Chris, uh, where can we find you? What's up, guys? So uh, definitely can find me over on X at at a writer underscore 84. Also, I've been working on doing more gaming streams, and I'm getting that much closer uh, to hopefully getting affiliate. So uh, you can find me over at Cosplaying a Kid 84 and also over on TikTok as well under the same name and hopefully of course as my schedule permits being on more and more of these shows because i'm really glad i got to be on here was so much fun yeah yeah yeah. i always enjoy talking movies to you guys even if uh, a certain crazy person doesn't like penguins <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I like the pig. I he like said the it was. He said it was good. He just said he liked the other ones better. <laughs> yeah, the best in the series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would actually agree, but I mean, that's just me. Uh, but uh, the Madagascar trilogy before Jesus. Hey, yeah. <laughs> You guys but are distracting Austin. me. I'm trying to pull a school of rock clip. Anyways, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's well, okay. Turn, so you got to take a break. Well, it's okay. Jordan, Jordan will give me six minutes, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll give you one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean you don't. Two hours later. Break. Okay, it's right. fine. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, you know. Yeah. You, like uh, JP said, Lonely Marks will be uh, Thursday. Uh, we'll be uh, doing a little draft action over there, talking about uh, all the latest news and happenings leading up to WrestleMania and my birthday tournament this Friday. A special Special mystery speed tournament with a twist so it's yeah. gonna be a good time uh you have to tune in to find out uh all the wackiness it should be a wacky good time uh but it's gonna be fast and furious it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun uh so you can uh, check that out and then a podcast about movies will actually be right back this saturday uh as we do have wrestlemania in two weeks so we're gonna go a little early myself and jacob barber will be doing uh, a topic of my choosing uh, for my birthday and then I'll, we'll do a topic of his choosing for his birthday so we're gonna talk horror remakes uh we're talking the thing the blob texas chainsaw 03 and hellraiser 2022 so we're gonna talk some fun stuff over there uh over on a podcast for movies as well so you can check us out nice yeah sounds mm-hmm. good and and damn it, uh, WrestleMania was supposed to be in Las Vegas this year. And me and Austin were going to, behind the scenes, we're going to do a whole trip and maybe go to it. And they moved it to Philly, and it's it's too far away. So and then next year, um, all of us, let's do it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I mean, if it mind. never goes to Vegas. Get a big suite in Vegas. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, if someone yeah. pays for my plane tickets, then maybe. <laughs> I, okay, yeah, no, right. that, that's the caveat. If you can get there, I'll get the suite. Uh, I'm not paying <laughs> for all you your what. all your plane tickets. I'm not doing that. And on the way yeah, there, right. rewatch Tropic Thunder. And yeah, re-watch. right. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> and then we talk about Tropic Thunder. Or we'll watch no, The I, Hangover or something more, based I'll, in I'll, Vegas. I'll, I'll, I've given it in his other yeah. notes. Stop. Yeah, yeah, but um let's see what we have going on for the the channel uh just follow us on the social medias at movie hero 2121 and all the socials uh you can find us at at my personal social jordan 83616 and you can find us in the uh schmidt on friends and family group on uh facebook where we've been, been posting some polls for these episodes and if you have anything you want to promote uh you can post to your hearts uh, desire over uh, in the uh, Schwinn on Friends and Family group. If you have a project, a YouTube channel, anything you want to um, hype up over there, we'll share it out and we'll we'll give you some love over there. We'll tell people to subscribe. Um, and then, let's see. So I did kind of want to make sort of like an announcement of, of sorts. So uh, I started up Recast. It was a very short-lived uh, show. We are going to finish it out, hopefully in, a, in like a week or two, with a recast of Willy Wonka hey, hey, the Chocolate hey, Jordan, Factor. Jordan, remember when you said you wanted to do that every week? Just saying. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that that was a little much. I didn't realize how much that that. I that show I, I mean, not not gonna say I, I told you that straight up, but yeah. What what do I know? <laughs> but I, yeah, right. But I'm doing a, a show that'll take a lot less work and a lot less less effort, but still a lot of fun. So to replace it, we're going to be doing a a show called the top 12 show i haven't really like this is the very early like uh, stage of it, but i want to try and fast Malcolm track is. it and like yeah. and like and like get it going fast though and, and so it'll be like the like basically like uh kind of like an an homage of, of sorts if you've seen john uh, roca and matt knows they do the top 10 just be the top 12 and we'll have different topics and we'll we'll debate but we'll um usually have an extra panel member or two but we want to uh, I try to keep it fairly short, so I'm going to work on on the best way we can keep it to like an hour, hour and a half tops, and and just make it quick. So just so, so we don't have like too much long content on on the channel. So yeah, that's kind of what what we're we're working on. Uh, but yeah, that's all I'm going to going to say for now. We'll have some more announcements and things once it gets a little closer to doing it. I mean, maybe like two, three weeks or something. But um, and then. Let's see. We have a, 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 a Patreon, which I'm also really uh, uh, working behind the scenes on some things to get some more podcasts going for our, our Patreon subscribers and, and things like that. But we do have exclusive podcasts. Uh, around the first of the month, I'll be posting the extended schedule over there, and you can can get a, a four-month preview to see what we have coming up on the channel and have first dibs on signing up for episodes over there. And I always give... Uh, uh first dibs to my patreon subscribers so if you're if you subscribe you'll get uh uh you'll be able to be on on the shows uh you'll have uh, a certain amount of guaranteed spots based on whatever uh tier that you sign up and you can sign up for as low at as one dollar and then they go up from there and we also give away movie posters and do that kind of stuff um uh, and then uh let's see we will uh we have trivia that we're we've been uh, doing. We're in the middle of a of the seen and heard movie trivia tournament. So we had two matches down. So if you go on to to Schwinn on Friends and Family Group, I did post the updated brackets there. You can see that and see some matches that are coming up. And uh, our next uh, tournament we're going to have is we're we're going to be doing a uh, exhibition match uh, around the beginning of of April. That the it's gonna be an April Fool's match. It's gonna be all movies that are uh, rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. That's what I decided. That it'll be just all rotten ones, and they'll be rotten from the critics. So, uh, and then, uh, so if you want to be on on that episode, just uh, let me know, and we'll we'll have you on there. And then we're gonna have our next tournament match sh- shortly after that. So, so like one of the things that uh, of the. Uh, Doing that, I'm also kind of letting Austin and uh, Richie Goodacre be kind of the the new uh, permanent house for Wheel of Movies, so that'll still be a, a thing, and I'll appear on it for when it, when it's one of my favorite movies. But they'll be kind of taking the reins, and I want to try to get more like trivia, more other things out, try to spend more time on that kind of stuff. Uh, just give me like a little extra time, not a lot, but a little. But um, and then yeah, and then just what we have for 
uh, tournament and tier rankers uh, come up. We already mentioned Austin's birthday episode, so tune into that fri- on Friday. Um, and when is your actual birthday? Is it Friday or is it uh, no? Or, it's a Sunday, Easter Sunday, a Sunday. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, oh, Easter Sunday. Okay, but yeah, no, but it'll be. A, it hasn't been weekend. on Easter Sunday in a long time. It's always like sometimes it's in March, sometimes in April. It's goofy, right? So, yeah, right, I don't it's know. one of those weird holidays that like switches yeah, around. Yeah, it moves weird. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, just tune in for that because I think you have some some pretty unique stuff in that tournament. But oh yeah, uh, and then uh, we'll be doing. Uh, uh, the best movies from 64 great directors. So that'll be soon. Uh, and then we'll be doing Austin versus Jacob Barber, uh, a term of their favorite TV shows. Uh, so just kind of like what me and Zach did on the channel or, or JPO and, and Malcolm, and they did that too. Um, and then um, we will be doing uh, some uh, a birthday episodes. We'll be starting out with uh, Jacob Barber with it. Or actually, no, no. Uh, I'm actually uh, Malcolm's will be first because he's more available on Tuesday. So we're doing that uh, um, episode that'll be a New Zealand related episode. So just I'm, I'm not going to uh, tell you too much about it. Just just uh, tune in for a bit of a surprise on that one. But um, and then uh, uh, then we'll have Jacob Barber's episode that'll be hit uh, 64 albums from 64 of his favorite music artists. So look at that one coming. And then um, we will be be um doing our geek series uh championship for the best geek characters of all time that'll be a three parter so because we're doing a three parter for the geek series we won't have another uh ladder series in until may but but we'll have that three parter for for that that'll have all the different uh geek fandoms you can think of so that'll be be in there and then uh we're starting our new tier ranker series that'll be best uh, a TV show decade series. So we're going to be, be starting because some decades you got to split them up because there's just way too many TV shows. So we're going to be doing best TV shows 2017 until now. So that'll be a, up first. Then we'll get back to one of our movie hero mystery tournaments. We do one of those every month. Um, and then I'll be doing a, a mystery tier ranker for my birthday at the end of April. So you can tune into that. Uh, and let's see. Uh, my, my, that... my, my, my scene's ready, so whenever you're ready. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, I'll just throw in just uh, some um, <laughs> quick ones. Zach Shelton will be doing his top 64. Austin and Jacob have a favorite actors battle. And then we have that best foreign slash alternate title episode. So, so yeah, that's what we have. So, so yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that'll do it. So, yeah. Uh, for Jordan Owens, for Zach Shelton, for Malcolm Lay, for Chris Scott, for Austin Pez Howell, and uh, Gazuntite, I'll be Jordan, the movie hero Anderson. And we'll <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>
Right, okay. Uh, good work, people. We will continue with our lecture on the man when we return. Have <laughs>